For 85 years, Clay County Electric has powered our community with a legacy of excellent service. And now you get power and connectivity with the same great service you've come to expect. Clay County Connect brings the world to your fingertips with reliable, affordable, high-speed broadband internet. The best part? You get the same great local service that has defined us for decades. To learn more on how we can best serve you, visit us online or call 870-857-3521. Let's give it up for Leonard's Paintless Dent and One Shield Repair. This is Eric Leonard's second year sponsors here at CSR. Call or text Eric for all of your automotive glass needs, rock chip repairs, windshield replacement, glass replacement, and headlight restoration. They accept insurance and are mobile. Hey, they serve all of the Clay County and surrounding areas. So call or text Eric today at 870-323-0100. Four one. Eric wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. He says, go Bobcats, go. Malone Custom Designs has a new spot downtown, and we'd love for you to come by. With our laser engraving machines, we can personalize almost any gift in our store. We do caps, knives, keychains, tumblers, stickers, decals, business cards, banners, and more. While you're here, consider booking a photography session in our new studio. Visit us at 421 Southwest 2nd Street in Corning, and let's make something special. Depression, anxiety, PTSD, and other mental disorders can separate us from the ones we love most. We can feel lost, distant, and detached from our lives. At Affinity Counseling Services, your ability to reconnect with life and loved ones is our priority. We provide in-office and telehealth services at each of our locations in Piggott, Corning, and Kennett, Missouri. Sign up for services now at counselingwithaffinity.com. A big shout out to Farm Service Incorporated here in Northeast Arkansas out of Corning and Noble. We appreciate them jumping on board with us here at Corning Sports Report. At Farm Service Inc., we strive to provide advanced agricultural technology with quality personalized service right here in Northeast Arkansas and Southeast Missouri. With our selection of brand name products and service technology, you can count on us to help your profits grow. They also want to mention they sell fertilized, chemical seed, farm supplies, fuel, and offer custom application. Farm Service Incorporated, want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. You can't be everywhere at once, but we can be anywhere you are. The Anywhere app by First National Bank. Putting you first, always. Clay County Connect is powered by Clay County Electric, bringing high-speed internet to rural communities in Northeast Arkansas. We chose Clay County Connect for our internet service. Number one, it's fiber to the house. Number two, the great local service they provide. We still have local service people right here in our community servicing us when we have trouble. Plus, we have a local office we can walk into anytime and talk to people from our area. For more information, give us a call at 870-202-1990. Here's a familiar face with us here at CSR. How about Jason Horner and Big Iron Auctions? Jason's been with us since the very, very beginning. I want to say thank you, Jason, for all your support here at CSR. He's your independent sales representative. You can get a hold of him at 870-598-4310. Listing equipment in Clay, Greene County in Arkansas, and Butler and Ripley County in Missouri. Again, that's Jason Horner with Big Iron Auctions, 870-598-4310. Jason wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Let's give it up to the solaces, our friends Jerry, Rhonda, and Michael with Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation right there in Corning, Arkansas. Been in business 40 plus years. Grain bins and related accessories, sales and service, complete irrigation installation. And in 2019, Michael became the third generation to continue to provide these services to their customers. Get a hold of them at 870 857 3086. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. On the upcoming season, that's Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation. Of 
all of us at Coin Sports Report want to say thank you to Cindy and Matt Woolard and Woolard Flying Service out of Corning, Arkansas. You can get a hold of Woolard Flying Service at 870-857-3839. Of course, they're there at the airport, 108 Airport, Highway 980 in Corning. And Matt and Cindy, huge hog fans, which we always love, but even bigger Corning Bobcat fans. We appreciate their support here at CSR, and we appreciate all they do for the city of Corning. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. Next up on the CSR sponsor video slideshow, Red Taylor Ford out of Corning, Arkansas. Hey, they've been family owned and operated since 1977. How about that? Right there off of 2nd Street, uh, right off the main drag there in Corning, Arkansas. Get a hold of them, 870-857-3516. Red Taylor Ford in Corning, Arkansas, offering new Ford cars, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers. Visit them online at www.redtaylorford.com. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. I want to give a big thank you to Mr. Kirk Scobie and Shelter Insurance out of Corning, Arkansas. Hey, as your agent, he can help you make sure you get the right coverage at the right price while providing the quality service you expect. Feel free to give him a call to discuss your insurance options today. That's Kirk Scobie at 870-857-3211. It's auto, it's home, it's life, but it's much more than that. Kirk wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Let's give a shout out to our new sponsor, NEA Veterinary Clinic out of Corning, Arkansas. Hey, NEA Vet Clinic is a full service animal hospital that welcomes patients for routine medical, surgical, and dental care as well as emergency treatments. Dr. Ginger Seagraves has over 20 years of veterinary experience, including regular pet wellness, diagnosing, and treating severe conditions beyond first rate pet care. They make their clinic comfortable, kid friendly, and calm so your pet can relax in the wedding room and look forward to meeting our veterinarians. Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Reach them at 870-857-5050. They want to watch the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. You'd be hard pressed to find bigger Bobcat fans than these two right here. Jim and Sandy Davis of JSD Cattle Ranch. I want to thank JSD Cattle Ranch for jumping on board with us again. Multiple years of support. Uh, we really, really appreciate them. And uh, they love us here at CSR, and we love them, too. Uh, Jim Davis, uh, we appreciate you, buddy, for helping out with this uh, for the third, actually probably fourth year in a row. So thank you so much. JST Cattle Ranch, go Bobcats. Let's give a shout-out to Harold Implement Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Harold Implement is a proud supporter of the Corning Bobcats, family-owned and operated in Corning, since 1946, we are your one-stop shop for all things Polaris, Bad Boy, Ace Hardware, Yamaha Off-Road, and hunting supplies. Again, give them a call, 870-857-3931. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Harold Implement Company. Let's give it up for our new sponsor this year, Southern Breeze Heating and Cooling, LLC. You see Mr. Wes Dollar and Danny Reed there on your screen. We appreciate those two guys, the owners there, commercial, residential, whatever it may be. These are your guys. No matter how hot it gets, how cold it gets, you've got an option here. Call Wes at 870-450-3900 or Danny, 870-323-2057. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Midwest Auto Parts has been a family-owned business in the heart of Corning since 1946, when it was established at 301 West 1st Street by Thomas and Bernice George. Midwest has and continues to serve the citizens of Corning and surrounding communities with the dependable parts and service. From auto parts and paint, hydraulic hoses, heavy duty truck, farm tractor, and power unit parts, Midwest probably has what you need. From five generations of former and current Bobcats, Midwest Auto Parts says, go Bobcats. Get a hold of them, 870 857 3084. From all of us here at Corning Sports Report, we want to give a special shout out and a huge thank you to Miss Lisa Jett, Mr. Joe Jett, and the entire Jett family for being our primary sponsor this year at Corning Sports Report. Uh, these fine folks have, have done it all for the city, the, the high school, the athletic programs, and also us here at CSR. Always giving, always helping out in any way they can. 
we want to say thank you and we're excited to watch those little ones grow up and uh, future Bobcats. Uh, we cannot wait. Again, big thank you to Miss Lisa Jett and Joe Jett and the entire Jett family. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. When your equipment needs service, you can rest easy knowing Legacy Equipment will handle all the heavy lifting, literally. Purchase a John Deere 1 through 4 Series tractor from Legacy Equipment and you'll receive free pickup and delivery for life. That's right, no trailer, no problem. With Legacy Equipment, you get the convenience of keeping your compact tractor in tip-top shape without having to lift a finger. Just one more way Legacy leads. Find out more at LegacyEquipment.com. Hands-on learning therapy services out of Corning, Arkansas. We are here for your child. Hands-on services provide speech, physical, occupational, and developmental therapy to children birth through 21 years of age. Our dedicated staff of therapists ensure each child receives the individual attention and quality of therapy he or she deserves. We provide services in the clinics, the daycares, and home settings. You can get a hold of Hands-On Learning Therapy Services at 870-520-8761. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Let's give a big thank you to Kate Pharmacy out of Corning, Arkansas. Multiple time sponsor here with the Corning Sports Report. Located right here off of 500 North Missouri Avenue in Corning, their pharmacy provides a number of services, including free delivery inside the city limits, very short wait times, compliance packaging options, a convenient drive through 24 hours, prescription services, vaccinations, diabetic shoes, and many, many more. Get hold of them at 870-857-6766. They'll wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Kate Pharmacy. How about my friend Matt Anders, a Corning High School alumni, and he's working with the Baker Implement Company now. They were established in 1938. How about that? They jumped on board with us here for the second year in a row. We sure appreciate Matt and all the fine folks there. Listen, 13 locations to serve you. Matt works there at Kennett, but they have 13 of them throughout Arkansas and Missouri. They're your local case IH dealer. Get a hold of Matt and the fine folks there at Kennett at 573-888. 4644. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Hey, big shout out and thank you to Mr. Jared Lowe and all the fine folks there at Serenity Ridge Pet Crematory. Uh, this ain't their first time with us, and we certainly appreciate their repeat business and jumping on board with us. The fine folks there at Piggott, Arkansas. Serenity Ridge Pet Crematory is now offering pet cremation services through local veterinarian clinics. Call your local vet to see if they offer our service. Several of them around here do. Not just there in Piggott, but several around Missouri and Arkansas. If you lose your pet at home, give us a call at 1-888-286-3469 for arrangements. That's Serenity Ridge Pet Crematory. First up on our CSR sponsor video slideshow is Ms. Kimberly Scroggins and Scroggins Associates in Corning, Arkansas. Tax and bookkeeping services, 20 plus years of experience and Ms. Kim was the owner operator there. You can call 870-857-3765. That's their office and ask for her. Ask for Kimberly there. If you don't mind, again, Scroggin Associates in Corning, 20 plus years of service, 870-857-3765. I love Kimberly's photo here. She's had this on here for a few years. Beautiful picture, uh, very family oriented. And we sure are with you this year, Kimberly. We love you. And if there's anything we can do, please let us know. That's Kimberly Associates, 870-857-3765. She wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on this season. Hey, guys, it's Andy Earls here at Baldwin Chevrolet. And when I'm not here giving you these uh, CSR live streams live in person, I'm at my full-time job there at Baldwin Chevrolet, Popper Bluff, Missouri. And we have four lots full of new and pre-owned inventory. And love the opportunity to earn your business. The majority of the vehicles on those four lots are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. That's right. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage. You can service it anywhere you'd like. A legit deal there. A lifetime warranty that covers your powertrain, engine, transmission, drivetrain assembly for as long as you own the vehicle. Get hold of me at 501 413 9715 or come up to Papa Bluff, Missouri and shop at one of the four lots here. Again, Andy Earls, Mark of Excellence Award winner, Baldwin Chevrolet. 
Go Cats. Thank you to Mr. Breck McMillan, your agent there with State Farm Insurance in two locations, Corning, Arkansas and Pickett, Arkansas, for sponsoring us here at Corning Sports Report. Here to help life go right, we're your good neighbors at State Farm providing you with the insurance and financial services you need. Get a hold of Brett and his staff at Corning at 870-857-3463 or at Pigot 870-598-2808. Brett and his staff want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. A big thank you to our new sponsor this year, Mr. Blake Johnson and Blake Johnson Farms. You see the family photo there. I always love these family photos uh, for their sponsorship picks. Love that. Blake's been a good pal of ours for a while, and obviously a big supporter of not only the city of Corning, Corning Bobcat Athletics, but also us here at CSR. Blake Johnson Farms, everyone at the staff there wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. I'm going to give a big shout out to our new sponsor this year, J&N Family Farms. Love the two uh, family photos there combined. I love that. That's awesome. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck from the Gleghorn and the Young families. And they are big, big Bobcat supporters, obviously alumni of the Corning Bobcat Athletics Program. And they are our new sponsors here at CSR. Again, one more time, J&N Family Farms wishing the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. I'd like to say thank you to our next sponsor, Noble Auto Sales LLC out of Corning, Arkansas. Had they been in business since 1968. Financing is available, good or bad credit, and they sell clean titles. Again, that's financing for everyone. Find them at 1502 West Main Street there in Corning, Arkansas. You can go online at noblecars.com or reach them by phone, 870-268-0350. That's Noble Auto Sales. Wishing the Bobcats the best of luck. All of us at CSR I want to say thank you to our new sponsor this year, Mr. Scott George, and all the fine folks at Scott George Farms. Big supporters of the city of Corning, of Corning Bobcat Athletics, and all of us here at Corning Sports Report. Scott jumped on here for basketball season. He wants to wish the girls and the boys the best of luck on the season here in basketball. Scott George Farms. Let's give a shout out to our new sponsor, Polka Huntis Medical Clinic out of Corning, Arkansas. Polka Huntis Medical Clinic is your hometown healthcare clinic. There is no place like home for our physicians. Our physician owned multi specialty medical group has been serving Polka Huntis, Arkansas for over 30 years and now here in Corning, Arkansas as well. You can find them at Corning, Arkansas at 400 West 4th Street. Get a hold of them at 870-631-3538. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, 870-631-3538. Wishing the Bobcats the best of luck. Hey, all of us at Corning Sports Report want to say thank you to our new sponsor, ABS Excavating. They jumped on board with us this year, and we certainly appreciate them. They want to wish the Corning Bobcats, boys and girls, the best of luck on the seasons. And they want to say, go, cats, go. That's ABS Excavating out of Corning, Arkansas. Chris and Lonnie Ballard at Ballard's Auto Repair would like to thank their loyal customers for the support and business throughout the years. Ballard's Auto Repair is a fourth-generation family-owned business here in Corning. Regular business hours are 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Come by or call Chris or Lonnie for your auto needs, such as minor auto body repair with free estimates, auto glass installation and windshield repair, oil changes, brakes and minor mechanical work, tire sales and repair, rotating, balancing and replacement, pro series battery sales, and recently, as if they don't do enough already, recently they have added U-Haul rental service for all your moving needs. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. That's Ballard's Auto Repair and Auto Glass. Up next in our sponsor video slideshow is our good buddy and also our staffer, Devin Ross, and his company, Ross Audio Video. He does a little bit of everything. A uh, bright young man and a darn good worker for us, too. We picked him up from over in the Lopanto area, and he helps out all of northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, a good range. He says, this holiday season, don't give the gift of work. 
Contact him, Devin Ross, to have your gifts professionally installed from TVs to surround sound. We do it all, and that is true. They do do it all. Audio, video, lighting, and install service. You can call or text him at 870-520-0497. That's 870-520-0497. That's Ross Audio and Video. Next up is our new sponsor, Sheer Magic by Tammy. That's Tammy McKenna, your owner there slash stylist. A full service salon. That means cuts, colors, perms, and waxes with a wide range of products for the whole family. Come see Tammy McKinney or Mary Russell for all of your hair care needs. You can reach them ahead of time at 870-857-3338. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Jim's Tire and Auto Service Incorporated out of Corning, Arkansas. These fine folks, great sponsors of ours, and they do a little bit of everything for the community. At Jim's Tire and Auto, alignments, new and used tires, all oil brands, service jump, brake jump, tractor and truck flats, batteries, road service, mufflers, record service. They do it all over there at Jim's Tire and Auto Service. You can see them Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., to 6 p.m. or you can see them Saturday from 7 a.m. to 12 noon. Owner Jim Venado wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Hey, here's a Bobcat right here. I mean, through and through. Bleeds black and gold, Mr. Mike Vincent. We appreciate him and his company's sponsorship each year that we've been in business here at CSR. Hey, what does Mike do? Let me tell you what he does. He's a full-time certified public accountant, tax planning and preparation, accounting and bookkeeping services. He's local, homegrown business, and him and his clients, they get to know their clients and their needs. Years of experience helping out the clients and have a long track record of stability and loyalty. Their goal? is to help their clients meet their goals. And Mr. Benson wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the year. Get a hold of them at 870-857-6221. And yet again, a new year and the same old faces here. Debbie and Bud Hill with Debbie Rose Massage there in downtown Corning, Arkansas. Miss Debbie's a licensed massage therapist, and that is her true passion, she says. But it's not just a massage place there. They also sell CBD products, and I mean a plethora of them, all kinds. Go see them at 413 Southwest 2nd Street in Corning, or call ahead 573-480-7819. And Debbie and Bob want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. And another repeat sponsor here, Miss Carrie Russell Kureshi. With Kureshi Law Firm and Wealth Management, we sincerely appreciate Carrie and all the support she has given us over the years. Uh, they're helping families and small businesses owners protect their wealth and loved ones. You can get a hold of them at 870-275-4304. Again, that's 870-275-4304. We want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Thank you, Mr. Zach Brown and Zach Brown Farms on the road to success. And we want to wish him and Shannon the best of luck. Uh, they're expecting a newborn baby not too long down the road. Congratulations, guys. And uh, we also appreciate your continued support, uh, not just with us here at CSR. We also recognize you guys support the town, the community. Uh, they're big in certain events there in the community as well, so we really do appreciate that. But again, let's give it up for Zach Brown Farms on the road to success. They would wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Thank you to Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Yet again, a CSR sponsor, and we sure do appreciate Miss Kathy Goodman, the owner operator there. Hey, Goodman Drug Company, serving Clay County since 2011. They are more than just a pharmacy. They are a family. As a locally owned independent pharmacy, they are able to provide their patients with the personalized health care experience they deserve. Get a hold of them, 870-857-0551. Miss Kathy and everyone at Goodman Drug wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. One of the most humble and smartest men that I know, Mr. John Selig. I want to say thank you to him and his company, Civil Engineering Associates. He works for there in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and also a branch in Poplar Bluff, Missouri as well. Uh, John's been great to us here at CSR. His company is sponsors every year, 
and we can't say thank you enough. Hey, if you need to get a hold of them, though, 870-972-5316 out of Jonesboro, or maybe a little bit closer, maybe you're in the Boot Hill, you want to call the Pop Bluff Branch, 573-686-2488. That's Civil Engineering Associates. Want to wish the Bobcast the best of luck. Let's get up for another Corning product here. Mike Townsend Farms LLC, right there on the outskirts of Corning. You call, we haul. That's his slogan. And he hauls some heavy, heavy, heavy equipment, all kinds of different stuff. And if you're curious of what all he hauls, give him a call, 870-926-2119. I also want to wish him and future Miss Townsend there uh, the best of luck and tell him congratulations on the engagement. That's Mike Townsend Farms LLC. Go Bobcats. Everybody at Corning Sports Support wants to say thank you so much to everybody at Watson Oil Company right here in beautiful Crown Free Corning, Arkansas. Uh, obviously a fuel supplier here in Corning, but but more than that, especially to us, they have been behind us 100% from day one, and we really, really do appreciate it. Uh, I love the family photo, too. That's awesome. Uh, Tight-knit group there. And I see some athletes in that photo, too. Hey, you can find them at 406 Southeast 1st uh, Street, right across the tracks there in Corning, Arkansas. Or get a hold of them at 870-857-6366. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Hey, these folks are some big, big-time Razorback fans. That's not the only reason why I love them, but they're also huge Corning Bobcat fans. Let's give it up for Woolard Farms. Nathan, Jennifer, Josie, Dylan, and Ashley, thank you guys for all y'all do, not just for the city of Corning and, of course, Corning High School, uh, Corning Bobcat Athletics, but also us here at CSR. You guys have been with us from the very, very beginning, and uh, we really, really do appreciate you guys. That's Willard Farms, and they want to say go Cats. Corning Sports Sports wants to say thank you to Miss Amy Jordan and Parkview Restaurant in Corning, Arkansas, Local family-owned restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can call ahead, you can dine in, or even go through the drive through window for pickup. Reach them at 870-857-6884 or go see them at 1615 West Main Street. That's right off the main drag there in Corning, Arkansas. Thank you, Miss Amy Jordan, for all you do for Corning Bobcat Athletics, the city of Corning, and also us here at CSR. Thank you to the Oaks of NEA in Corning, Arkansas, and a good friend of mine right there, a classmate of mine from the class of 2006 here at Corning High School, Miss Lisa Bass. The Oaks of NEA is a beautiful outdoor wedding and event venue with a new indoor downtown location. Get a hold of them at 870-631-2279, a five-star company. You can find them downtown at 515 Southwest 2nd Street. That is Miss Lisa Bass and Brian Bass, the Oaks of NEA. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Next up on the sponsor slideshow is K Ron Farms out of Success, Arkansas. Hey, you want some genuine people who genuinely care about Corning Athletics and the Corning Bobcats? These folks right here, Keith and Rhonda Turner, we want to say thank you guys so much. Uh, several years in a row now, they have sponsored us out of Success, Arkansas. And we certainly do appreciate it. They don't wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Nutrien Ag Solutions. Nutrien Ag offers a wide variety of services to help out their clients in the agricultural sector. And you can find them online at NutrienAgSolutions.com. And more locally here, we love our man James Varvel. Big, big thank you not only for what you do here with us at CSR with the sponsorship and Nutrien Ag Solutions. Y'all, we spearhead that. But all the volunteer work, the time that you put into different programs in the city of Corning and the athletics. James, we appreciate you, buddy. Nutrient Ag Solutions, go Bobcats. First Choice Healthcare, revolving around you. We want to say thank you to First Choice Healthcare out of Corning, Arkansas, for their continuous support of Corning Sports Report. Hey, go by there and see them. And they do accept walk-ins over there at 1300 Creason Road in Corning, Arkansas. Or you can call ahead and schedule an appointment at 870-857-3399. Their hours of operation, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. They do have extended hours on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Again, that's First Choice Healthcare, revolving around you.
How about the Wiedemans? That's right, Jeremy, Amanda, Jaden, and Kylie. Extremely good to us here at Corning Sports Report and always very supportive of not only the Corning Bobcats, the high school, but also the city of Corning as well. A star-studded MVP type of family here. Uh, love their graphics here. A uh, big thank you to Amanda for always helping us out with this and uh, always answering any questions that we may have. Uh, always supported us since day one, and it does not go unnoticed. The Wiedemans wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. How about Wiedemann Farms in Corning, Arkansas? I want to say thank you to Larry and Miss Mary Wiedemann. And for all they do for us here at CSR, they've sponsored us since day one and have not uh, wavered. They've been there through and through. You can find them at 561 County Road 131 there in Corning. And I know Miss Mary, I, I can't find a bigger Razorback fan than me or Bobcat fan, maybe in the whole town, than Miss Mary. I want to say thank you to both of you guys uh, for your unwavering support. And they want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Next sponsor up, that would be B&B &B Well Drilling out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas. And the folks that own that, Mr. Brian Bass and Lisa Bass, thank you so much, uh, Brian. Good friend of mine and uh, always been good to me, and I appreciate him. And a uh, good athlete back in the day as well. Hey, for all your well drilling needs, get a hold of this man right here, 870-215-3808. Again, that's Brian Bass with BNB &B Well Drilling out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas, 870-215-3808. Want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Hey, give a shout out to my friends Jessica and Trent McKinney out of Corning, Arkansas with MCK Cattle Company. Uh, before I spoke on behalf of them, um, just from what I know about them, now I can speak firsthand about this company because I have been getting some of that farm-raised beef, and man, it is absolutely delicious. Love it, extremely fresh. Um, we do a lot of business with these folks, and we sure do appreciate them. Uh, that farm-raised beef, we talked about the cattle hauling, the custom hay, whatever it may be, get hold of MCK Cattle Company. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. You can reach them at 870-323-3353. Let's get up for Carter Cox Seeds out of Noble, Arkansas, and our good buddy Michael Smith out of Corning, Arkansas, for their great, great support here at CSR. Year in, year out, they're there behind us. They are also in a highly productive, irrigated, quality seed area of Northeast Arkansas. They distribute in an area from Central Arkansas to Southeast Missouri. It's a wide range. Proprietary and public groups, four, five, and six varieties, soybeans, rice, wheat, corn, and milo seed. Get a hold of them, 870-259-3231. Thank you, Michael Smith. Thank you, Carter Cox Seeds. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. Next up on our sponsor video slideshow is Farm Bureau Insurance out of Corning, Arkansas. We appreciate them. They've been with us since day number one the entire time, all five years. We cannot say thank you enough to those fine folks. Cliff, Danielle, and now Nicole. We appreciate Nicole Hufford as well. She's jumped on board with them too. Obviously, her husband, her kids, and herself all help us here at CSR, and we appreciate that. Big thank you, Farm Bureau Insurance. You can find them at 2504 West Main Street there in Corning. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., closed on Saturdays. You can reach them, 870-857-6788. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. Wishing the Bobcats the best of luck. We can't say thank you enough to these continued supporters of CSR, Ms. Sheila Boschlicker and Boschlicker Brother Farms. They want to wish the Corning Bobcats, uh, the boys and girls teams, the best of luck on the upcoming season. And we appreciate all that they do for our community, the school, and obviously us here at CSR. Again, thank you so much, Sheila, and thanks everyone at Bosch Liquor Brothers Farms. Go Cats! Yet again, the same name, same faces here, Jerry and Linda Turner for Jalen Farms. Thank you guys so much. You're always so nice to me. You've done this every year with us, and uh, it means a lot to us, the support you give us here at Corning Support uh, Sports Report. Uh, they don't ever care what we say about them or what it is. They just want to support us, and that means a lot. So let's give it up for Jalen Farms, Jerry and Linda Turner. And they want to say, go Cats, go.
Looking to add a unique twist of excitement to your upcoming event? Look no further. Our phone party experience is the perfect way to create unforgettable memories. Packed with laughter, dancing, and endless foam-filled fun. Get ready to elevate your celebration to a whole new level with this immersive experience. You can find our good buddy Jeremy and all the fine folks at NEA Phone Parties online at neafoneparties.com. That's neafoneparties.com. Or find them on Facebook at NEA Phone Parties. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. Next up on our CSR sponsor video slideshow is the Allen family. That's Billy Allen, Jen and Allen. And, of course, you see the awesome picture of the kiddos, Lily and Grady Allen. We appreciate the entire Allen family for jumping on board with us. They are all Bobcats all the time, whether it's the city of Corning, whether it's the school, whether it's the athletics, or whether it's us here at CSR. Big thanks to Billy and Janet for jumping on board with us. Love the picture there of Lily and Grady. They want to say, go Bobcats. All of us here at CSR, I want to say thank you to Mr. Logan Davis and Naylor Agri Incorporated for jumping on board and sponsoring us. They're out of Naylor, Missouri. They sell fertilize, chemical, and seed, and they also sell... Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Corning Sports Report's live coverage of some Corning Bobcat baseball. It's 3A3 action as we invite our rivals from across county, the Piggott Mohawks, into God's country, beautiful crime-free Corning, Arkansas, Bobcat Field here on the campus of Corning High School. And we are getting close to first pitch here in Corning, Arkansas. Piggott comes in with a 4-4 four four record, I believe 2-2 two two in Conference 3. A 3 Bobcats come with a 3-2 record, and I believe a 1-2 overall conference record. Andy Earls on the headset here today. Just me. You guys got to deal with just me today. We'll have several cameras for you, though, and we'll go through there these right now a camera on first base that's unmanned a camera at the pitcher mound that's unmanned a camera from way back about 375 feet that's unmanned a camera to try to get the infield action here but it does not look good it's kind of dark that's a cheaper camera of ours and then this camera right here from behind real quick let's go through our keys to the game if you will visitor keys to the game that's the mohawks and picket limit mistakes in the field put the ball in play and of course Early confidence, obviously, that's always a good one when you're a road team. Coming here, it's going to be a big game, obviously. Very important game for both teams. You want a good early start if you can, and that is definitely important. And Bart Watts says, sounding good, Andy. Thank you, Bart, for uh, for checking in there with me. And let's go through our Corning Bobcats. Keys to the game today. Aggressive base running. Hey, if we can get these runners on, let's be aggressive. We have seen that in a couple of their wins. And, of course, a couple of other games I did not get a chance to watch, but – couldn't uh, speak on behalf of those, but the ones that I have seen, the games they have won, that's one thing they have done. Throw strikes and trust your defense. The last thing you need to do is getting out here, putting leadoff runners on, walking two batters, and next thing you know, they steal. Next thing you know, you got two runners in scoring position. Allow that defense to have an opportunity to have your back, throw strikes, and then on the other side of that, put the ball in play. Limit striking out. We've seen it. We was here for the Truman game, the last home game we streamed. Sometimes if you just get the ball in play, man, Crazy things can happen, and they did that game. So that's a very, very, very key stat there. You see the records at the top of there as well. Just tuning in with us. You're live on Facebook. You're live on YouTube. Share that feed, comment, engage with us. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm on Facebook right now. Speaking of, Erica Nossett's watching. Stephanie Jones is watching. Bart says sounding good. Glenn Counts is watching. Amanda Lunsford Golf is watching. Chad and Melissa Woolard's watching. Mark Wood says, let's go Bobcats. Janine Sexton is watching with you as well. Stephanie Jones says, let's go Bobcats. I appreciate it. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know who you're tuning in for. Specifically, maybe a team, maybe a player. And I believe on the bump today for the Bobcats is going to be Reed McMasters, if my um, lineup is right. And we're excited uh, about Reed being up there. He closed out the game against Truman not too long ago. It was our last home game that we streamed. Now, obviously, I didn't get to see the Gosnell games. I know Gosnell's kind of on a different level right now, it seems like, them in Rivercrest. But he's doing a great job in the games I've seen. So Reed will be on the bump for Corning. And on the bump, I believe, for Piggott will be Ashton Lemons. Hey, guys, we cannot do what we do without you, the sponsor. Thank you guys so much. We had 62. I actually know it's 63 now. I haven't updated that, actually. I'm sorry. It's 63 sponsors now. That's insane. Guys, we're a small town, small community that we have no business having 62 sponsors. And by golly, we do. Or 63, I should say. Uh, we, matter of fact, I'm going I'm to fix that right now because I actually have the power. I've got the power. And I'm going to do it. 
I wonder if it'll update right there. Oh, there it goes. Boom. Look at that. I'll give you a little boom, baby, for Bart if he's watching still. Excited about that. Man, thank you all so much. Y'all y'all drive us. It's the reason why we're able to do what we do. It's the reason why we're able to have so many cameras here today, like the one right there on Mr. Reedy Mack, the pitcher, the lefty, the southpaw, if you will, today. Guys, if you are if you haven't been outside today, holy hay bales. The wind is gusting. We got a storm, a brewing. It's a coming. Don't know when it'll be here. Speaking of, we typically – get these things started your first pitch is typically going to be around 4 30 p.m not today not today we started this thing a little early just to make sure that we could get this game in uh for everybody watching at home and for everybody obviously here too that's got to travel back to picket um for the fans just everybody the players in general the umpires um definitely want to make sure obviously safety first the last thing you want to do is get caught up in a close game late in the game then all of a sudden lightning delays it and then what do you do and you know this storm isn't just a storm that's going to blow over. It's going to be here for a little bit. Then you've got a close game that I, I presume would be picked up at another time. I don't even know when it would be picked up. I don't even know how that would work, honestly. Um, but definitely wouldn't be able to be played tonight. So the last thing you want is that, man, because then it kind of affects the momentum, the rhythm of the game, just everything that you would hope wouldn't happen. That would be a part of it. So great call by the coaching staff, um, whoever was involved that maybe the AD, not really sure who all was involved with that. But whoever is involved, kudos to them. A uh, really, really good call there. I want to thank Coach Kyle George for all he does for us uh, here at CSR. Also, the assistant Drew Rad, uh, Radcliffe. Sorry, um, they've been really, really good to us, and we sure do appreciate them. Um, I know anytime you've got a, a staff like that that always has your back and always helping you out, and uh, guys, we bug the fire out of them. I mean, we absolutely bug the fire out of them, and they're always helping us out. So. We sure do appreciate them, and uh, I hope they know that, and I think they know that. So, All right, guys, we're about ready to get this thing started, and I've got to do a better setup here. I've got a bad setup here. There we go. Maybe that would be a little bit better for me. Maybe. I don't know. All right, guys, we're excited to bring you some baseball, not just baseball, but some Conference 3A3 action, not just some Conference 3A3 action, but a little bit of a rivalry here. Little Corning, Piggott. Gotta love it. Here we go. Leadoff batter for Piggott, Scott Wright. Can't go go uh, can't go wrong with Scott Wright. The shortstop, number eight. And let's see what Reed comes out with this first pitch, low and down for a ball. Leadoff batters are usually very, very, uh, very, very selective. We'll say. Scott Wright did a good job there on the first pitch. Reed McMasters. That ball's poked right back to him. He's going to take it, the throw over to first, and he's out. Great job by Reed there. That didn't take long at all. One up, one down. You always want to get that uh, that leadoff runner out if you can. Good job by Reed and company there getting that out. That was a 1-3 put out for the Bobcats. And, guys, sorry, I am literally here by myself, and I've got about a million different things to do, so – the play-by-play -play may suffer a little bit. The switching of the cameras may suffer just a little bit, and I do apologize for that. But I will do the very best I can possibly do for you uh, today. First pitch is in for a ball. And we do not have a scoreboard operator. I wonder if – wow, okay. We do not have – guys, I'm going to go off of <laughs> – I better be on my game today. Um no scoreboard operator. I can barely hear anything with these headsets plus the wind going. Um, so I may be wrong sometimes on this count. You're just going to have to bear with us today. This is not ideal situations. I do believe it's 3-0 and the official, or the umpire, sorry, official. What am I talking about? The umpire uh, lets me know that, and I appreciate that from him. Let's see if Reed can settle down. We'll see if Ashton Lemons, the two-hole hitter here, has the green light or if he's got a red light. He took all the way, and it's a strike right down the heart of the plate. Great get-me-over pitch there from Reed McMasters. See the defensive alignment on the interior of your infield there. Here comes the next pitch. 3-1, high chopper foul over the concession stand, and that'll be a long strike. And now count ran full. For Ashton Lewis, also the pitcher for the Mohawks, number two in your program and on number two in your lineup as well. How about that? 
That don't happen very often. Here comes the payoff pitch from Reedy Mack. Sets, winds, kicks, delivers. Right down the heart of the plate, a swinging strike. Great job by McMasters there. Two up, two down, and a three-hole hitter. Comes up to bat. That's Will Lucas. Will I am Lucas. This kid is a baller, folks. And you want to know why he's a three-hole hitter? Look at that right there. Now, that is a baseball body right there. I'm telling you that. Third baseman for the Mohawks. First pitch is low and inside. Good job there by Rapert. Hey, we talked about Rapert the other day. I'm going to keep the camera right there. Normally, I'd go back to the pitcher here. But I'm going to keep the camera on Rapert. Uh, Rapert did a heck of a job the other day when we were here against Truman. Just being a wall back here, man. Very few balls got past him. I don't think any of them would have been considered pass balls. I think they'd all be considered wild pitches. This kid has done a great job back here behind the plate, and these guys don't get enough love. And I always like to give those catchers some love, man, if we can. Kind of like your old line of football. Ooh, inside there. I tell you what, Lucas is hanging in there. He don't mind if that ball hits him at all. He's hanging tough down there. You see him right here in your screen. You see him and McMasters. McMasters again with another 3-0 count. We'll see if Lucas, your three-hole hitter, has a green light here. You assume fastball here or whatever's working command-wise. A little off-speed action there. Maybe a two-seamer. It's hard to tell from where I'm at. I am right behind the umpire, and I see a little bit of the baseball as it comes out of the hand, but not much. Not much. You see your defensive alignment against the three-hole hitter here. Outfield is a little bit deep and left and center. Right field will actually probably a little shallow and right, I would say, if anything. And infield, probably about normal depth. Here comes a 3-1 count. High arching shot out to center field. Oh, and he couldn't see the sun got in Kemp's way. That's going to be a double for Lucas. Tell you what, that sun got in Kemp's way. He had a beat on it for a second. And then lost it. I don't know if you can see in this instant replay here. I guess I got it a little bit too late there. I apologize. And I got to change the settings on that. We're going to move that back just a little bit. If we can. But either way, you got a runner on second now for Piggott. Again, still two down. Bobcat's not in, a, not in a panic mode yet here. Early on here in this first inning. Your cleanup hitter. Lawson Tompkins, left fielder for the Mohawks. The first pitch in there, low for strike, right at the knees. A little cheese at the knees for you right there. Good job by Reed. Finally getting ahead of the count here. I think that's key for this young man. Looks back at the runner there. Again, that's Lucas on second. He's going to third. Lucas is going. They're going to throw over down to third. Is close, but not in time. I believe that was a ball. Let's try to catch the replay. Did we catch it fast enough? We did for once. Hey, look at there. Andy's learning. <laughs> Here comes the 1-1 one, one pitch. Skied out. I mean, skied out to second base. It was actually at short, and it kind of meandered over to second base. This wind's playing tricks on these, uh, these infielders today. Great job by Isaiah Hollowell tracking that one down, and, boy, it was not easy. We played one inning of baseball here in God's country. And four up, three down. Lucas got all the way to third base, but they leave him stranded, does Reed McMaster. And I tell you what, that first inning by Reed there got a little bit behind in counts. But, man, did a great job of coming back at him, battling, battling, battling. You love to see that from your pitcher. The last thing you want in this game is to start walking everybody that comes up early on. That'll mess with your confidence. You start getting behind against your rivals. A big game that you need. It gives them a lot of confidence. That's big right there to battle back in that. Hey, great job, Isaiah Hollowell. Man, I'm telling you something, guys. The wind is absolutely gusting here. A typical easy fly ball is not going to be easy today, I promise you. It just will not. Not today. I almost hit one of our cameras here as it comes to the backstop. Give you a little bit of a look here at the infield for the Pigot Mohawks. Again, on the bump for them is Ashton Lemons. Ashton Lemons, remember that name? Another sport for Pigot. Kid's a good ball player. 
want to say thank you to everybody that's came out here today as well. We got a decent little crowd for for the Bobcats. Also got a good little crowd here for for Pickett as well. Come out and support their kids. You like to see that. We got a little. Uh, I guess you could call it, I don't know if it's a meeting. I don't know what it is or not, but the Arkansas Department of Transportation is going, oops, sorry, hit the wrong button, is going to our community center tonight, the NBA Lane Junior Community Center tonight. And I believe that's at 6 or maybe at 7. I can't even remember now. It's bad. And they are going to be there to discuss the new bypass, I-57 bypass. And I say discuss, we were, we were talking about live streaming that, but the problem is you can't really live stream it. It's... There's really not – there's not going to be like a presentation per se. There's going to be pictures. There's going to be some other things like that. And there will be a guy there, but he won't be guest speaking. He'll just be answering questions. I don't even think on a microphone. I think he just goes around answering questions. So kind of a weird ordeal to, to really live stream. So we decided against that. Uh, of course, with the the time of the baseball game, kind of makes that hard too, obviously. And here we are with it. As your leadoff hitter for the Bobcats in the bottom half of the first inning, Kenan Cummings comes to bat. Again, Ashton Lim is on the bump for the Pig and Mohawks. You see him right there on your screen. Here we go, first pitch. Chopped over to the third base. No, lost it off the glove. Collects itself just in time to get the out. Great job over there by Will Lucas. 5-3 on your put out. I doubt I got it quick enough. Let's get a look at it here if we can. Oh, I did. Fast hands by Andy Earls and by Will Lucas. How about this? Back to the backstop, right off the fence. As Lemon's pitch nearly hits one of our uh, receivers here. As number 12, Seth Smith, comes to the plate. And he's quickly ahead of the count here. Seth, the lefty. Got righty lefty here with Lemons and Smith. 12 gauge, if you will, all on the outside corner for a strike. Beautiful pitch there from Lemons. Roger Hovis is watching. Jessica Wright, April Woods, Bucky Hayes, Katie Hampton, Mary Grubb is watching. Several people on with us. We appreciate you for tuning in with us. That ball hit really hard. A rope over to center field for a base hit. Great job by Seth Smith. We got a runner on first now. Sorry, guys, I have an issue there with my uh, my scoring system over here. It was not giving Seth a hit, and we all knew it was a hit, but it just did not want to give him a hit. But by golly, it's going to now. We're going to make it. You see the lead over there by Smith. There's Lemons, the wind up, first pitch to Reed Mack. Out to left center field. That's a big-time hit right there. It's going to go one hop to the fence. Smith, round in second, going to third. He's round in third. He's coming home. There's going to be a play at the plate. No, it's not cut off by Lemons. RBI double from McMasters. How about that? Big-time stuff. You see your replay there. Got a round on it. And that ball was slicing hard towards left center field. Honestly, Scudder never had a shot at it, to be honest. And you see the leadoff there for the Bobcats. Ripped hard right past the shortstop. That's going to be an RBI single. Oh, maybe not. Reed kind of tripped up going around third. And another base hit for the Bobcats and another run. Just like that. Great job by Cole Kemp. Give Cole Kemp some love there. These Bobcat batters ambushing these pitches. I mean, absolutely ambushing them. We'll see if that's what Isaiah Hollowell does here on his first pitch. He's looking to bunt. However, it gets past the catcher. Runner's going to advance to second, and that's Kemp as we got a 1-0 count now on Isaiah Hollowell. And I'll get you his graphic up there right now. The senior, number three. I'm sorry, number eight in gray. Good early start here for the Bobcats. 1-0 delivery inside. Just missed with the off-speed pitch to Lemons. He wanted that call. Good eyes there from Hollowell. 
Now all of a sudden you got a hitter's count here, got a runner on second. You're feeling good with a 2-0 lead. Only one out. They look to second. They may have gotten the pickoff here, and they do. And he's out. Great job by Lemons and company. Watch the replay here. The pick move prevailed. They caught uh, caught Kemp kind of a little too aggressive. We had mentioned aggressive base running as being one of the keys of the game. And I think Kemp thought it was going to be a key to the game too. A little bit too aggressive that time though. Two down now for Hollowell. Oh, right off the back shoulder. And that's going to be a hit by pitch. Let's watch that one one more time. Ouch. That one hurt me. He's not rubbing it, though. I'll give him credit. Watch this, folks. I said shoulder. That was almost neck. Very close to hitting off the neck there. But either way, that hurts me just watching it. He's tough, He's tough he says to the umpire. <laughs> I like when the umpires, they, uh, they like to engage with us, man. It's so much fun. You see Hollowell over there at first, and the first baseman, Cole James. And here's your pitcher, Lemons. And there's your batter, Isaiah Hollowell. Oh, just a little bit high, he says. I'm sorry, that's not Isaiah. I apologize. That is actually Rodney Rapert. Forgive me there. I was looking at, uh, looking at something here on our graphic. We actually don't even have a graphic for that, so we're going to change that around. For some reason, we have Rodney Rapert's uh, number, a different number, but we will fix that. I'll have that fixed up by the next time he comes up is what I'll do. 2-0 pitch. Lemons checks on the runner at first. Close, but they're going to say safe. Beautiful, be a beautiful day right now for a ball game. Now, later on, probably not so much. We're going to try to do our best to get this game in if we can. That's why I started early. Hard line drive. So actually, that's way it's a pop-up. Way up near center field. Oh, dangerous play there. Center fielder got a little too aggressive there. Got up ahead of it. The wind threw it back. The next thing you know, it's going to be a error on the center fielder. And a scored run for the Bobcats. And now you got a runner at second as they reach on the error. Man, I cannot see anything behind this umpire. I swore that that ball <laughs> had literally went straight over his head, but uh, that was not the case. Dangerous pitch inside off speed. Goes behind Price. And it's a 1-0 count on the freshman. Here comes the pitch. Chop back foul. Behind us for a strike. One one's the count now. On number 15, Ty Price, your seven hole hitter for the Bobcats. Runner in scoring position here. Just a bit inside. Two one. Can I tell you, Lemon's working quick. I'll give him that. I'm up here switching cameras, checking the audio, looking for maybe possible ones to replay, having to do the graphics, the uh, the stats, and Lemons is just not giving me enough time. I'm going to talk to him about that. That one's chopped foul as well. Price staying alive in here. I love the cuts from him. He's not getting cheated on any of these cuts, I can promise you that. Good-looking freshman, especially at the plate. You see Lemons, you see his jersey? I can't tell you how, how much of a gust the wind is uh, giving us right now. That's a strike. Outside corner, great pitch by Lemons there. We'll watch the instant replay. Give you an opportunity to look at that. And right there, the second baseman got in our way there, but it's right on that outside corner for a strike. However, the damage was already done. Three runs plated. Three Bobcats come across home plate in that bottom of the first inning, and it's 3 nothing Bobcats here in God's country. Beautiful crime-free Corning, Arkansas. Andy Earls, on your headsets. We came in today talking about keys of the game for Piggott was limit mistakes in the field. Well, they already had a couple of them that uh, that first inning. Uh, well, actually, I say I say couple. Really, one the pop-up to center that I thought was a line drive because I can't see anything back here, and I'm getting old. Um, but that really cost them. Honestly, cost them a run there, and put the ball in play on offense. And the first inning did an okay job of that. And early confidence. Obviously, you're down 3 nothing. That did not check that one off. And for the Bobcats, we had said their keys to the game was aggressive base running. Well, they were aggressive, a little bit too aggressive <laughs> as they uh, 
One of those was a, uh, a pickoff is what it was. And then throw strikes and trust your defense is what uh, Reed McMasters needs to do, and that's what we feel like he'll do. And another one was put the ball in play and limit strike counts. I lost a camera there. had to go get it, turn it back on. We've got it back up now. All right, again, just a one-man show, so I apologize. Real quick, while well, we got a quick opportunity here as you get a look at Reed McMasters on the mound. Again, a big thank you to all of our sponsors. We cannot say thank you enough. 63 sponsors, guys, in a small town like Corning is phenomenal. There's nobody else in the state that's doing that. You probably think I'm just saying that. I promise you I'm not. Literally nobody in the state of Arkansas has 63 sponsors. You guys rock. We cannot do what we do without you, and we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, I wish there was some sort of uh, goodies bag or something I could give everybody or season tickets or something. Cause, I mean, you guys have been you guys have meant that much to us. We really do appreciate it, and we try to say it every stream. It probably gets uh, monotonous. You probably get tired of hearing it, uh, but especially if you're a normal viewer with us. But we really do appreciate it, and that is big, big, big time stuff. So thank you guys so much. All right, let's get off that. Let's get to some baseball, folks. Big, big game here. Remember, this is not just a conference game, conference 3A3 game that you definitely need. But it's a rivalry game. You always want to beat the other team from across the county there. Big thanks to Colton Ludeman. He's our IT guy from afar. He's not here, uh, but he is here with us in spirit. As number 18, the five-hole hitter, Kenyon Luttrell, comes up to bat. McMaster's in his second inning of work here. And let's see if he can have a little bit better inning from a pitch count standpoint. Got behind the count on two of the three or two of the four batters. That ball's chopped foul. That was a good pitch there. It's off to a good start. Got behind 3-0 on two of the four batters and battled back. Did a great job. And remember, credit Isaiah Hollowell. We talked about the win playing tricks with these uh, infielders and outfielders. Hollowell probably ran about 50 feet to catch a fly ball that would normally be just a can of corn. Nice off-speed pitch there for a strike. Well, there's not a whole lot that Luttrell could even could even hope to do with that right there where it was, where it was located. Now you're ahead of the count. Does he waste a pitch here? No, goes right up the middle, does Latrell for a base hit, base knock, and he'll round first, and he'll hold tight, pump the e-brake, put on the parachute, and Piggott has their second runner on in this ball game, and the first leadoff runner that they've had so far early on. Remember, top of the second here. Pitch number 20 coming from Reed McMasters, and it'll be thrown to first baseman Cole James. They thought about checking out the runner. You don't see that very often. Hadn't even thrown a pitch yet and hadn't even got on the, the mound hardly. Uh, was already looking to throw. That was interesting. Inside, just a bit off the plate for a ball. And it's pitch number 20 is thrown in there. You see, tune in Saturday, 316 for Arkansas State University Rugby. We are the home provider of the Red Wolves Rugby. Guys, they are big time right now. Good pitch there. Swing through and missed. They are number three in the country, number three in the country, and they are hosting this weekend. It was number 10 in the country. I haven't looked at uh, Davenport's most recent ranking, but pick back opportunity there to no avail. The trail got back in time. See the alignment here from the infielders for the Bobcats. Outfielders at normal depth except for the right fielder. Boys came in, thrown in there really hard for a strike. A swing and miss right there. I, t I tell you, I think James was – it was one of those half-hearted swings. I think he had already went too far and just couldn't pull it back. Strikeout from Riddy Mack, and they go over to first to no avail. Tell you what, McMasters, good stuff right there. I mean, he just attacked Cole James. Didn't play around, just went right after him, and that's what you love to see. Here's the first. In the dark, gets past the catcher, Rapert, and that's going to be Latrell at second easily. I would assume that would be ruled a wild pitch, but either way, I know Walker Johnson was getting as far away from it as he could. He's the hitter right now, your catcher for the Mohawks. And now they got a runner in scoring position with only one out to the Mohawks. You see him right there in red. Chop right back to the pitcher. He's going to go to first with it. 1-3 on the put out, and the runner's going to advance to third. Out number two for the Mohawks as the Bobcats 
trying to go through another clean inning here. But yet again, for the second time in two innings, the Mohawks have got a runner at third base. This is Blasco, your second baseman for the Mohawks coming up. Here's the first to Blasco outside. Oh, they're going to call a strike. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I'll, I'll go with that. He painted the corners, what we're going to say. I love it. These umpires do a great job. We sure do appreciate them. High chopper. That's going to be foul out of the play. That'll be a souvenir for a kid, at least for a few seconds anyways. And all of a sudden, McMasters pitching ahead of the counts. We love to see that. It's a little different animal when you got a 0-2 instead of a 3-0 on all these batters. Right down the heart of the plate, struck him out for strike three. Great job. We'll watch the replay on that one. And that'll be out number three. That'll be the end of the inning. And the Bobcats survive another inning with a – Piggott Mohawk, base runner at third base, but no runs across home plate. We have played inning and a half here in God's country. Corning three, Piggott zero. We're going to take a quick second here if we can to go to our ad video. Guys, we'll be right back with the bottom half of the second. 399 23 That's Mr. Logan Davis and Naylor Agri wishing the Bobcats the best of luck. From all of us at CSR, I want to say thank you to Michael, Brittany, and Michaela Ward and Ward Construction for jumping on board with us here at CSR. Ward Construction was started in 2013, licensed and bonded in Arkansas. They do all kinds of home improvement jobs and new construction based in success, but they work in all the surrounding areas. Just get a hold of Michael at 870-335-6693. That's Michael Ward with Ward Construction, 870-335-6693. Nine three. Glam Hair Studio is a. All right, guys. We appreciate our sponsors. There, we got a quick uh, opportunity to get them heard and seen before the bottom half of this second inning starts. And I do need to remember to uh, to add a few people to our lineup here. And one of them is this young man coming up right here, Dowdy. I think I had him as number 21, and he's actually 27. And then we didn't have Rodney Raper in there. We said we'd fix that. I'm going to fix that at some point, and I will. Trying to fix that right now. Again, just me here, so doing the best I can to get all this stuff in, if I can. There we go. All right. And we're trying to get this game in in time. We have got some rain coming later today or this afternoon, I should say. Bottom of the second inning, that's Dowdy, the senior, up at the plate. Lefty, be righty on lefty here. And the first pitch is down low in the dirt for a ball. He would have needed a uh, sand wedge to hit that one. Don't want him swinging at that one. That one he does swing at, though. It's going to go out of play over the home dugout side. And it'll be a foul ball. It'll be a 1-1 count now on Dowdy. April Woods tuning in with us, Bucky Hayes, Bart White, I'm watching CSR, and the SEC Tourney. Okay, Jennifer Eddington's watching, or Jennifer Ward's watching, I should say. Julie Blasco as well, also watching with us. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. A little bit outside. Oh, it's right on the corner of the plate for a strike. One-two count. Good pitch there from Lemons. Lemons working off of 21 pitches so far early on. Amanda Mahan says, let's go, Marcus. And here comes a little chopper. He just looked... Literally, excuse me, swing to the outside, and he pokes it out to center field. And actually, he's going to go for two. Rumbling, tumbling, stumbling, Dowdy with a big-time double for the Bobcats. I didn't think he could even reach that uh, pitch out there, and the center fielder kind of struggled. That probably should be a an error, probably a single, then an error, if I had to guess, is the way it should be uh, ruled. It'll be the second error against Piggott in this ball game. And now you've got uh, Dowdy at second base. Chopper to the shortstop. 6-3 across the diamond for the putout. As the Bobcats first out of the inning. 
Good job by the shortstop there, Scott Wright. Again, can't go wrong with Scott Wright. He did a great job. And now the Bobcats are back up to the top of the order. That's Cummings. They have been ambushing these pitches. First one gets behind the catcher. Dowdy's going to rumble and tumble over to third base, and he advances. Good job by Carson Dowdy. Man, I'm loving the, the wheels on this young man. This kid is rolling. I love it. I love how aggressive he's being, too. Runner on third here, only one down. Good opportunity for your senior Cummings. Who went off of the shin pad of the catcher there, lost it for a second, darted to his right. He does find it. Thank goodness. That's dangerous. Well, if you're the pitcher, you got to be ready for that, too. you got to be covering quick there. Dowdy has been pretty aggressive on the base path. Hard hit past the third baseman for a base hit. That's a ribby knock for the senior. How about that young man right there? Give him some love. I mean, a hard hit. That ball was on a rope. Good diving effort by Lucas. Just couldn't get there in time. Four-nothing Bobcats. Yes, sir, you betcha. Now you got Seth Smith at the plate. Seth looking to bunt. No, he lays off of it. Runner goes to second. No throw. And that ball was in there for a strike. I really think Seth was taking the whole way there. I really believe that. You see the wind, you see the hair of lemons, the jersey of lemons. That wind is really wreaking some havoc. That ball gets away, runs out in front of the catcher. He's going to throw to third on a run. A little low good scoop by Lucas, and Cummings slides in safe at third base. That is a really tough play by the catcher right there. That ball goes in front of him. He's got to pick it up going forward and then throw it on the run. He's got to still get his arm back far enough. Kind of think of it as the third baseman coming in hard on a slow chopper. That is not easy. And he actually had a pretty decent throw, did Walker Johnson. And credit Will Lucas for not letting that ball get past him. It was thrown literally right at the bag. If it hits the bag and bounces away, that's another run for Corning. And it may not matter anyways. Chopper over to first base. They take the out there, and they'll sacrifice that run. As the second out comes up, the Bobcats bring another black and gold gray jersey across home plate. It's 5 nothing now here in the bottom half of the second inning. Up now is Reed McMasters, and boy, did he have a lick earlier. Comes right back at us here. Hard foul ball, and I mean, that thing, it must have hit one of the cross members. It bounced a really good way. Normally that fence will kind of give some. But if you hit one of those upright bars, I mean, it goes pretty far, and that time it did. Second from Lemons high and outside. McMasters was trying to pull that pitch. Good pitch by Lemons right there. That's a good job by Ashton. Reedy Mack at the plate. High and outside. Why not? Hey, I like the thinking there from Lemons. Good job this time by McMasters from laying off that. One-two count now with two down. But I love the idea there from, from Lemons. Boy, he is pitching quick. I tell you what, that curveball gets a little bit away from him. But, boy, it hooks back really quick. And I mean last minute. It's like a bowler that uh, spins that ball on the ledge right there of the gutter. Then it shoots over real quick. Chop back foul. And pitch number 35 in the books for Lemons. Bottom half of the second inning here in God's country. Bobcats five, Mohawks nothing. It's still early, though. A lot of ball game left. Here comes the pitch outside. Good job. I'm going to tell you something. Mac Masters has done an excellent job on this plate appearance. He bit early on that outside pitch, and he has not been. Here comes the payoff pitch. Now down low, and he does a heck of a job battling, 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 and then he gets a walk. He got you another runner on for the Bobcats. In this inning, for the Mohawks, it feels like it's never going to end. You got Cole Kemp coming to the plate now. Number two outs here for the Bobcats, up 5 nothing. This game was supposed to originally start at about 4.30, but with the impending weather and some storms, actually, 
They're going for some uh, possible bad storms tonight, so everybody be careful tonight, wherever you may be. They started at 3.30 instead. Off-speed pitch on the outside portion of the plate for a strike. Good job by Lemons. I think these Bobcat hitters have been ambushing that fastball on the first pitch, so Lemons said, hey, you know what, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Pitching like Adam Wainwright. Hard hit out to center field. The center fielder overruns it, gets behind him. Cole Kemp is rounded up to second now. Here comes the run around third. The Bobcats are going to score another run as LeGrand passes home plate. And an RBI double for Kemp. I tell you, when you got the speed of LeGrand on first base, you get it past the outfielder, it's trouble. And it was there, and I hate it for these outfielders right now. I know Scudder's doing everything he can out there, but this wind is rough, guys. I mean, we've got some pine trees over there that are pretty heavy, pretty thick, and it's moving the – I mean, the wind is absolutely moving the branches over there, and you can see it. You just feel for the infielders, the outfielders, all of them, really. First pitch to Hollowell. Gets past the catcher, and that's going to advance the runner to third. He's thinking about coming home. He's going to pump the brakes. Isaiah Hollow was trying to give him the hold sign there. I don't know if he saw it or not, but he was trying to give it to him. <laughs> you get an opportunity to, to keep on chucking, man. You're going to do what you got to do. Get an opportunity to steal a run here real quick. Hollow at the plate. Chops one foul over towards the third base visitor dugout. I thought Kyle George was going to die for that one for a second, but... We didn't see that. Nikki Stadler's watching Kyle Williams. DT Brownie, Randall Griss says go Bobcats. Jim Earl Jones also watching. Lynn Johnson, Mike Townsend. Appreciate you guys. There's a base hit right up the middle. That's going to be an RBI knock from Isaiah Hollowell and the Bobcats. Just keep on tacking on, man. 7 nothing is your score now. Great job. I tell you what, Isaiah Hollowell. I know the games, I know we've only streamed a few games, but the games that we have streamed, he has done a heck of a job. Really, really has. Now you got another senior up there, Rodney Rapert, coming to bat. He's got a runner on first in Hollowell. First pitch high for a strike. Let's see Hollowell go back now. Lemons gets the sign, checks on the runner. Comes two. Now he's going to throw with the runner. Not in time. Good check, though. I don't, I don't mind that. 43 pitches on the afternoon for Lemons. Rodney Raper at the plate. 0-1 count. High. High and outside as well. It's going to be a ball. Good eye there from Raper. I want to say thank you to the uh, umpires as well. They always engage with us, and we appreciate them. Always fun to talk to with these games. and. They're doing a heck of a job today, and it's it's not easy. They had to get here earlier. Um, you know, it's tough on us to get here, too. I mean, I'm the only one here, obviously. You can tell that. I had to leave work. We need my day off, actually. but um, So it's tough on them as well uh, to get here at 4.30, much less 3.30, but both of them were here on time, so we appreciate that. 2-2 two, two count with two outs. Deuces are wild. If you're a Bobcat fan, take that hat off and start shaking it. See if we have a good little, little bit of good luck here. Rodney Rapert swings through it. Great pitch there from Lemons. And we have played two innings of baseball here in God's country. It's the Bobcats, seven, the Mohawks, zero, as you see on your screen there. And as we have an opportunity, I want to thank all of our sponsors. I want to thank our staff. We have an amazing staff here at CSR. Uh, very, very fortunate uh, to have the staff that we have. And uh, they keep us going, obviously. And I know I'm the only one that could be here today, but most of the time I can't be here for these baseball games. It's just uh, the way it works with my schedule. And uh, our staff, uh, they find a way to make it work. So I want to say thank you to them. And uh, thank you to those that are watching. If you don't mind, share that feed for us. We've got Wesley Couch watching, Pat Grubbs watching. Thank you guys for tuning in with us today. You see on the mound there, Reed McMasters. He'll be going into his third inning of work. For the Bobcats. Now, I haven't checked anything on YouTube, but I guess it would be a good time for me to do that while we've got a little bit of a break here. Let's just go ahead and do that. Go 
Got a few messages there. I'm just kind of going through. I'm trying to try to check in on some of these uh, social media engagements. You guys have uh, always been good about commenting with us, letting us know where you're tuning in from, who you're cheering for, things of that nature. Got several on YouTube right now as well. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Run through the cameras here just to make sure they're all looking good. There's our first base camera. Again, no one here to actually man these cameras, just me. There's our camera on the pitcher at all times. There's our camera about 375 feet away. That's kind of our pitch cam, if you will. Then anything that's in the infield, that's kind of our action camera. It's a little bit dark because it's a cheaper camera. Uh, just is what it is. Then I've got a GoPro, and I do it for kind of wide view stuff or for kind of just putting stuff up there, like say this graphic right here, whatever. Whatever graphic it may be, I always kind of use that uh, view for that or anything in the outfield because this infield view right here does not really, well, I guess if it's right field it will catch it, but most of the time. Ideally, I'd love to have an elevated uh, backstop back here to where we could actually get a camera um, and actually get it uh, up high and actually have a cameraman here to actually run it so you could actually see those uh, plays in the outfield a lot better, but beggars can't be choosers. Uh, we don't have any of that today, so <laughs> we just got to deal with what we can. First pitch from McMasters in for a ball. This is the top of the third inning here at Bobcat Field. And here we go again. I tell you, Keegan Scudder doing a good job of being patient up there. Reed McMasters on the bump, getting behind the count. He did this in the first inning as well. Oops, I'm sorry. I got, is that right? Oh, I hit the wrong I hit the wrong graphic there. I'm sorry, guys. I was wondering what was going on as we got a pitch for a strike. I was trying to give you this graphic right there. There we go, the Reed McMasters graphic. There we go. Chopped right back to the pitcher. Jumps off the mound. Throws it left-handed across the diamond for the first out at first base. Great job by the left hand McMasters there. One up, one down here in the top of the third inning. It's kind of weird if you've ever been a pitcher and you've had to field a ball that isn't straight above you, to the left of your right of you, if it's kind of where you're still kind of on that mound, it's kind of weird because you've got that incline and it's kind of tough to, I don't know, your footing, like you're taking one step, but then you're, you're pressing with the other one and you're going downhill while you're doing it. So it's kind of an odd feeling. And Reed did a good job there. Made it look easy on that one, but a lot of pitchers will struggle with that. It's a lot easier if it's four feet ahead of him. He can run. He knows he's running straight off that mound into the flat ground. But when it's kind of right there at you, but not right at you, maybe to the left or the right of you, that's kind of tough. Jandy him inside there. Got it by him for strike two. Great job by McMasters. And this is the leadoff hitter, Scott Wright, for the Mohawks. Already an O. Or 1-1 one, one count, I should say. I'm sorry. Poked out towards right field. I think that's going to find a hole, and it does. Base hit by the leadoff hitter, Scott Wright. Can't go wrong with Scott Wright. And he is on your number one hole hitter, your number two hole, or your number two hitter in this inning for the Mohawks. And just like that, the Mohawks have another base runner. They've had a base runner each time in every inning. And they've even got the base runner to third base, but they could not drive him home from there. We'll see what happens here. I assume the leadoff runner probably got a little speed. We'll see if Wright decides to go. He does not. Right over the heart of the plate for the strike. Good pitch there by Masters. Jim Davis says, oh, Jim Davis watching. Cody Panky, Mark Lucas, Ronnie Jones, Jim Davis as well. Tuning in with us. Thank you guys for tuning in. A little pickoff play over there. Just a little look. Give him a little bit of a look there. Just let him know that you know he's there, you know? I know that you know that I know that you know I'm there. Outside pitch for a ball. 1-1 one, one count, one down, top of the third. Two-hole hitter Ashton Lemons, also the pitcher for the Mohawks. He's going now. Is Scott Wright. Raper with a good throw. It was in time. I think the base runner actually kicked the ball as he slid in there. Watch the replay here, folks. Great job by the base runner here. Scott Wright. I think it was a mix-up there between your infielders not knowing who was going to cover, to be honest with you. It's a 2-1 count. They're going to check on the runner at second. He slides back in head first. Safe. Safe. 
That's exactly what happened. Neither one of those guys. I think the throw was on the mark, honestly. If one of them would have came up, whoever it should have been, probably would have had him. They're really checking on right right now. Again, he is the typical leadoff here, your one-hole hitter, if you will, for the Mohawks. 2-1 count here on the pitcher for the Mohawks, Lemons. It's pitcher on pitcher now. Lemons could help his cause here if he can get a base hit. Right back to the pitch. No, go to the shortstop. Hollowell across the diamond in the dirt. Smith picks it up. Great job by Smith there. I tell you what, that was a great pickup by Smith off the dirt for the second out of the inning, but the runner does advance to third. That's Scott Wright. Now you got big Will Lucas, the third baseman and the three-hole hitter for the Mohawks coming up. Two errors in the game for the Mohawks. You've seen that on your graphic down there. You'll see another graphic here. Give me a little bit of a line score, if you will. And the first to the righty in the dark. Good job by Ray for keeping it in front of him. Again, for the third inning in a row, the Mohawks, pinch me if you heard this one, have a runner at third base. And what do we have going on here? We have – I have no idea what's going on here. Maybe a lot of sweat on uh, Hollowell's hands. I'm not sure. Either way, they were getting a, a towel to kind of rub his hands and then rub his glove, and then he got his hands on the grass. Hey, I don't blame him. The last thing you want to do is throw across the diamond – for the third out when you got a runner on third and it slips out of your hand. That would be the worst thing that could happen. Swung through. Did he tip it? I think he did. Well, that's a big tip foul there from Lucas. And the reason why, if it's not tipped foul, that ball's behind the catcher, and that's probably a run. Let's watch the replay here. Oh, yes, he did. Thankfully for the Bobcats, that was a foul ball. And they're going to check on the runner one more time. In fact, I think they've checked on him every base he's been at. <laughs> Scott Wright has had to go back and forth, back and forth the entire time around the diamond. Jammed him on the inside. Fouled behind the backstop here for a strike. And Mohawks are down to their last strike in this third inning. Again with a runner on third base. That's Will Lucas and Reed McMasters. You've seen your picture there. Ken Reed and McMasters. Rudy Mack get out of the inning yet again unscathed. We shall see. Inside on Lucas just a smidgen too far. And on the hands there, try to jam him again. Almost the same pitch, same location. I don't mind that from McMasters. He swung it the last time. Why not? You see the defensive alignment there in the infield. Here comes the pitch. 2-2 two -two count. And it's low. Good job by Rapert. Well, big, big pitch right here for both teams. You get the Runner on third, which will be the first run for the Mohawks if they can get it, if they were to get it. And you've got a full count here. Corning trying to keep this shutout going. Trying to shut the door. Good job by Lucas staying alive there. Found it out over the right side. Two hops to the Agri building. A little ways to the right of us here. Piggott trying to Claw their way back in this game. Looking for their first run inside, and I think it hit him. And it does. It's going to be a runner on first no matter what, if it hit him or if it didn't. That's one way to, you know, if you're a pitcher, you got a 3-2 count, and you've wanted to be a hitter before, that, that's the time to do it. I mean, either way, if you throw a ball, it's going to be first base. So Definitely not saying that's what, was ha what happened there. I'm just saying that's a definitely a good time to do it, though, if you're going to do it. Runners on the corners now for the Mohawks. Up to bat is Lawson Tompkins. They're going to check on him at first. Lucas, that is. Right on first, Lucas on. I'm sorry, right on third, Lucas on first. And Tompkins at the plate. Here comes the pitch, the first one from McMasters. They're going to call it a strike. I had a feeling today that the strike zone would be big just because of the impending weather. The last thing you want to do is have this game last while. Great hit, base rip. That's an RBI.
from Tompkins. Good job by Tompkins. In the first run of the day for the Mohawks, and now the Mohawks are threatening here with Latrell coming up. The five-hole hitter, your right fielder for the Mohawks. Good job of that young man right there, Lawson Tompkins. 7-1's a score now. McMasters from the stretch. Runners going to third. Base hit right past where the third baseman would have been. That's going to drive in a run, an RBI single, and back-to-back at bats for the Mohawks. Third baseman kind of looking at that uh, runner coming across there and did just enough to move him about two feet over, not saying that he could have had a play at it anyways. I don't know. That's Ty Price over there. Maybe he would have. Maybe he wouldn't have. Who knows? But either way, it's a base rip. And just like that, the Mohawks not only finally got some runs on the board, they got a couple of them now, and they've got two on as the wind picks up. Cole James coming to bat now. For the Mohawks, he's showing bunt. And he brings it back last second, and it's right down the heart of the plate for a strike. You wouldn't think your six-hole hitter would bunt with two outs and two on, but we've seen crazier things. Next pitch is outside. As a fan says, good eye, and it definitely was from Cole James. Nick Rapert's watching with us. Amy Cat, Becca Barajas, Camden Hudson. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you don't mind, share that feed for us. Comment, let us know where you're tuning in from. They're going to check on the runner at second. Ooh, Cummings had a kind of sky for that one. Keep it from going out past him into center field to where Cole Kemp is. Your first baseman for the Mohawks, Cole James. Runners on first and second for the Mohawks right now. Went golfing, did James there. Got a sand wedge out. He poked it. Foul towards the Bobcat dugout as Rapert will go get that for the Bobcats. Snatch that ball up. And now all of a sudden you've got a 1-2 count with two down. Again, Mohawks down to their last strike in this third inning. Can the Bobcats get out of it? They're going to check on the runner again. See Latrell and Smith talking it over there. And Masters bends in to get the call. Comes two. Ames kicks, fires, curveball right on the outside edge of the strike zone for ball number two. Close pitch, though. Man, that's a tough one to take. That's a tough one to take if you're Cole. This one, though, gets him, blows it by for strike number three. Great job by McMasters. A little bit of damage done there by the Piggott Mohawks, but Bobcats still do have a lead of seven to two. Five hits for the Mohawks, two errors. Seven hits for the Bobcats, no errors. And we played three and a half innings of baseball here in God's country. We're going to send it out to our sponsor video, guys. We'll be back with the bottom half of the third inning. For it. Found at 1910 Northwest Boulevard in Popper Bluff, Missouri, Hannah Eddy is a proud cosmetologist taking the world by storm. Please contact her at 573-686-4690. Walk-ins are available through Monday through Saturday. Thank you. Hey, all of us here at CSR, I want to say thank you to Miss Lynn Masterson and her new venue, Third Street Boutique. Here in beautiful Crime Free Corning, Arkansas, right off 3rd Street. This is the old Electric Beach off our Huddle Plaza area location, if you remember that. Clothing, gifts, custom t-shirts, and tanning, and much, much more, including localized Bobcat apparel. Get a hold of Miss Lynn at 870-215-6783. Again, Miss Lynn Masterson, 870-215-6783. Hour of operations are from Monday to Friday. From 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, 11 to 1.
And we're back here with more action live. Bottom of the third. Freshman Ty Price takes the first pitch for a ball in the dirt. Here at beautiful Crime Free Corning, Arkansas. Bobcat Field on the campus of Corning High School. Next pitch up and out, but right on the corner of the plate for a strike. Lemons, your starter. Creeping up on 50 pitches now. That one's in the dirt as well for a ball. Good eye by Price. Appreciate Miss Shelly Smith for uh, running the scoreboard here today as well. Nobody, nobody had that. Uh... Oh, great job. Great base hit right past the third baseman by Ty Price. Good rope, young man. Heck of a job there by Ty on the base hit. The pitch was actually inside, but really quick hands. He still turned on it. It's an awesome job there. That'll bring up Carson Dowdy. Anyways, big thanks to uh, Shelly Smith for uh, running the scoreboard here at the uh, Bobcat Field. Nobody was back here running, and that was the first thing I, I kind of looked up. And I actually said something to you guys, too. That one's fouled back over us, over the concession stand. And uh, I was like, man, I hope I uh, keep his score right because I'm the only one keeping score. But thankfully, she, uh, she took charge, and we appreciate her doing that. Leadoff runner on for the Bobcats. And you got the senior, the lefty, Dowdy. So it's righty on lefty here. Hard hit over there past the base runner, past the second baseman for a base hit. How about that? Good job by Dowdy there. Give Carson Dowdy some love. He's been on twice, had a double earlier. Probably called a single with, a, with an error out in center, but still got on earlier. And he had some wheels, man. I'll tell you what, he's a good base runner. Like in all seriousness, he's a really good base runner, and that'll bring up Brady Russum. And everyone checking on the runner here. Actually, no, we got a bat. I'm sorry, we had a bat over. Not quite in play necessarily, but it was it was awful close as Russum was looking to bunt there, and they say he went for a strike. That's, that's a tough one to bunt when it's outside and tailing away from you like that. We'll see if they keep the bunt on here. Dowdy at first. Price at third. Russell swings through a strike. Little high there. Good job by Russell. One two count for Brady as Lemons out of the stretch comes to, kicks, fires, low and outside. We lost our camera again, so I'm going to try to fix it real quick if I can. Next pitch, just a little bit high, and the runner's going to go. It got past the catcher, and the runners will both advance, and that's a run for the Bobcats. Holy hay bells. Not only that, but now you get a full count on Russell with a runner in scoring position. How about that? Boy, a lot of stuff happening there. Sorry, guys, I had somebody that was uh, talking to me there. We got a group called Growing Corning Together, and that was one of our uh, one of the people in the group there uh, wanting to talk to me real quick, so I apologize. You see the mound visit there from Coach Billy Joe Seal. Appreciate him. He's always a really, really good dude, man. He's always fun to deal with. Um, I think he's great for the, the community there at Piggott. Uh, everything he does, a uh, really, really good man. So you guys have got a good one in him. And then, of course, assistant coach uh, Scott Dodd as well. Um, you know, he's a Corning guy. Um, you know, obviously there are rivals. Don't get me wrong. I'm not getting soft on you. I promise. But they are rivals. But it would be hard not to root for those two guys, uh, Billy Joe Seal and Scott Dodd, uh, on the other side. So 
Here we go, full count. Got a runner in scoring position at second base for the freshman, Brady Russell. Lemons, here's the pitch. Hit right back at him. He does a great job there. A little bit too quick with his throw, but it's just in time <laughs> for the first out. Holy smokes, I tell you what. I think Cole James uh, just went in a, a big circle there, and I think he's a little dizzy now. What is that game where you get the little bat and you would go around in circles and you would get up and try to run? I think that was Cole James there. Bless his heart. First pitch swing in his Cummings. I tell you what, Lemons was smart enough to know that. Cummings likes to ambush that first pitch. And the wind, guys, is absolutely howling. I don't know if you can hear that in my headset or not, but it is howling right now up and in with the next pitch. Again, we've got uh, – we got some weather coming tonight. Hope everybody stays uh, weather aware and stays safe. These are healthy cuts from Cummings. I'll give him that, but you got to give Lemons credit. I mean, this is the third time now around the uh, the lineup. Cummings is your leadoff batter for the Bobcats, and Lemons is kind of figuring it out now. High pitch, but it is swung through for a strike. Great job. Well, Lemons, all of a sudden, man, it's like he's like an old car. It just takes him a while to get warmed up, but when he does. Look out. He's at 63 pitches now, and he's pitching better than he has the entire game. Here comes 12-gauge. Seth Smith to the plate. The first one is a ball in the dirt. Picked out by Walker Johnson. Aside from the uh, win we can have, it's all right at the third baseman. It gets by him. We're going to call that a base hit as hard as it was hit. My goodness, that's going to be an RBI single for 12-gauge there. Great hit, young man. My goodness. I mean, it went right at the first baseman, had English on it. I'm going to give him a hit for that. I'm not going to put an error on the on the board there. He smoked that one. Holy hay bells. 12-gauge getting it done. Lemons now with the runner on first. He's going to check on that runner at first, a little late. Swipe through the dirt while you uh, tag him. Get a little dirt on him there. McMaster's at the plate. Runner's going. The throw high, way past anybody, really. The shortstop or second base or anybody. That's going to get out in the outfield, and that'll be uh, stolen base by Smith. That pitch was in for a strike, I do believe. If I heard the umpire right. I have got nine to two on my scoreboard, but I may be wrong. Scoreboard has eight to two. We'll figure that out. High foul ball past us, behind us, past the concession stand, and probably back in the ditch if I had to guess. Runner on second. That's Seth Smith in the gray jersey you see on your screen. That's Lemons pitching right there. So will be pitch number 68 and pitching to Reed McMasters. Good eye there by McMasters. One, two count, two outs. Can Piggott get out of this inning without another Bobcat coming across home plate? We shall see. Inside, almost hit him. McMasters turns into it there. Now you got Deuces Wild for the Bobcats. Parker Davis watching Dalton Reed, Crystal Shepard, Amy Cat, Nick Raper. Appreciate you guys tuning in with us. That win picks up. Pitch low, and the runner's going to advance to third. You got a ball and a runner advancing. Stolen base again by Seth Smith. You see him right there on your screen. Now Lemon just has to worry about the hitter. McMasters. Full count here for Reedy Mack. Pitcher on pitcher. Rowdy on lefty. High pitch outside. Good job by Reed McMasters. Excellent job there at the plate. Good plate discipline right there. In fact, I believe he got down 0-2, if I'm not mistaken. From 0-2 to a walk, and he's going to get a pinch runner in the grand, I do believe. We'll see who comes out there. Yes. I believe that is Connor Legrand. We'll give a shot over there to make sure. But well, he hasn't came off first, but yes, that is definitely Connor. Okay, 
So you got Smith at third. So you got runners in the corners here. Two out. Smith at third. Legrand on first. With Legrand's speed, I assume he's going to be uh, taking off here. We'll see if they give a little pickoff play to first here. They don't. Legrand goes high. Chopper out to shallow right field. Will it drop? The second baseman lost it. Holy hey, Bills, that may score a run. Here comes the play at the plate. Under the tag, the ball gets by him. That's a run for the Bobcats. And Cole Kemp will advance to third on a shallow pop fly to the second baseman. Wow. Holy cow. Well, a lot happening there. Again, we talked about it earlier. This this wind is is rough, guys. I mean, it is really rough. And it's not a constant wind. So sometimes it gusts and it'll stop for about 30 seconds. And then it'll come back up, and, I mean, it'll be kicking it hard. I mean, really hard. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys can't hear it on the, on the stream. Oh, that might have hit him really close inside with the first pitch there to uh, Hollowell. But it, it's just gusting at times, and it's kind of calm at times. It's it's a weird, it's a weird day, and I hate it for these uh, these fielders. That's a high fly ball, shallow center field. I can't see anything. I think he did come up with it though. I literally couldn't see that uh, if I had to. But either way, great job by the center fielder, which is Keegan Scudder, to finally end that inning. However, the Bobcats did plate several. In fact, it is. 10 to 2 is what I've got, but now our scoreboard has 11 to 2. Either way, 10 hits for the Bobcats. I think that is right because the runner did score on that uh, lazy fly over at second. I don't think I ever hit, uh, I don't think I ever actually gave the run to him, so that would be right. So let's fix that, and there we do. All right, so. Bobcats, 11 runs on 10 hits, no errors. Piggott, two runs on five hits with two errors. And we have played three innings of baseball here in God's country. It is 11-2 to two in favor of the Bobcats. Well, we got an opportunity. Let's mention this about our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors for jumping on board with us, all 63 of you guys. We sincerely appreciate every single one of you. And we could not do what we do without you guys. So thank you all so much. Um, for all the support, you guys are always good to us. So we appreciate that. In fact, I'm going to take a second to let the sponsors be heard. We'll be back with the top of the fourth inning here. In RMD Redmond's Mobile Detailing. RMD is a fully mobile detailing company. They come to your home, office, or any location of your choosing for all of your detailing needs. All you got to do, contact Brandon Redmond, 870-634-7714. That's Brandon Redmond, 870-634-7714. This ad was sponsored by Mr. John Bradshaw. It's RMD Redmond's Mobile Detailing. From the Energy Enhancement System at Debbie Rose Massage, it's Debbie Rose and Bud Hill, and they are celebrating Corning Bobcat Athletics. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck the rest of the year. And they also want to ask that you stop by and check out their Energy Enhancement System at Debbie Rose Massage in Corning. And we're back with action here in the top half of the fourth inning. At Bobcat Field, and that first pitch from McMasters to Walker Johnson was in for a strike. Swing and strike. Beautiful, beautiful day for some baseball as far as a weather temperature standpoint comes from. Now, if you're an infielder and outfielder having to deal with the wind, um, not so fun. Not so fun at all, actually. In fact, you would probably say it's awful. Um of course, tonight, oh, hard hit, deep center Kemp. He's got a beat on it, and he's going to bring it down. Good job by Cole Kemp out there. One up, one down here in the top half of the fourth inning for McMasters and company. Again, this game had to start at 3.30 instead of 4.30 due to the inclement weather, uh, inclement, inclement weather that is impending. Uh, supposedly, I keep hearing around 6.30, maybe 7 for our area. I don't know how true that is. Um... I do realize there is a junior high game after this. 
And normally I would 100% for sure, without a doubt, get that game in for you. Normally. Did I miss something? Did he drop that? I, guys, I must have missed it, but I guess. I guess we dropped that. I did not realize that. Holy smokes. I apologize. There is a runner on first, though, and there's no outs, so that has to be what happened. Camp was under it. Gosh, I even thought he had it in his web. Of course, I'm sitting down right behind the catcher, behind the batter, behind the pitcher. Second baseman, the umpire, it's hard for me to see anything. I've got a big monitor in front of me. I've got a big laptop in front of me. I've got an iPad in front of me, some equipment, a bunch of cords, a bunch of battery packs. I mean, it's really tough for me to see, but I just assumed that that was an out. But uh, I assumed wrong, obviously. Low in the dirt for ball one. Stephanie Jones said, the wind is while we are watching the game and the truck at the fence <laughs> getting to hear your play-by-play -play so it doesn't get any better. I love that, Stephanie. Uh, which, okay, so okay, so are you the – got to tell me which truck you are out there. i, I got to know now. You may have to fl uh, flash your lights for us or something if you can, uh, Stephanie, if you're listening still. Uh, I would love that. Maybe I can figure out which truck you are out there. Either way, yeah, she, Stephanie's right. It is so windy, and it's – I'm telling you, I would hate to be uh, playing defense out in this stuff. Man, on any pop fly. You know, I had said – I probably shouldn't have used the word earlier. I said lazy fly ball. I should have never said that with the wind the way it is because it, it is not an easy can of corn today at all for anybody on any ball that's out there. And I mean, we've seen a lot of it already uh, today from both sides. You know, plays that are typically made on a normal day. They are just not being made today. And a 3-1 count now for Blasco. And he's going he's gonna to draw a walk. And you've got runners on first and second now for Piggott. You see the Mohawk base runners there. Heather Price also on as well. Tuning in with us, Dalton Reed, Parker Davis. We appreciate you guys for jumping on board with us today. Reed's at 62 pitches now on the day. Don't know who we would have come in to uh, pitch in relief, but, you know, if you're Piggott, oh, bun a tip. Oh, Raper thought he had an opportunity to die for that and just couldn't quite get there. Good effort, though, by Raper. That'll be fouled off for a strike. Uh, but if you're Piggott, man, if we, can just, if we can just get a big inning here, they've got two on with no outs, your leadoff runner on and the next guy on as well, get a big inning here. Tack on three or four runs real quick. Maybe that gets McMasters out of this game with his pitch count. Looking to bunt. Goes right back to the pitcher. McMasters spins. Tosses across the diamond. One three on the put out. And that will be the first out. But the runners do advance. And that's the job you want to do if you're Keegan Scudder. And he got it done. That is a lost art, too. I will say that. Without a doubt, a lost start uh, at all levels of baseball, if you ask me. Now you've got your leadoff hitter right up there. That's who you want up there if you are Piggott. Swings through it for a strike. You can almost – it's like it's like a very tense moment here. You can tell there's just – the crowd kind of got quiet on both sides. I think everyone knows kind of what's at stake here. you got two runners in scorer position with a leadoff runner on. This could be big-time stuff here for Piggott. Pitch outside for a ball. Good job by Rapert for getting out there. 1-1 one, one count with one out. Scott Wright, the shortstop for the Mohawks, your leadoff hitter, right-hander. Lefty on righty. Outside again, almost deja vu. McMasters has got to... Uh, Look at this two ways. Obviously, you get the leadoff hitter. The last thing you want to do is give him something to hit. First base is open, but at the same time, the last thing you want to do is load them up with only one out. That ball was inside on the hand, just on the edge of the rubber there, the black of the plate for a strike. Good pitch there by McMasters. You see the two runners on there, second and third. Here comes the pitch. Chop foul straight back at us. Scott Wright staying alive. Two twos your count now. Jesse Wright's on. Randall Godwin's on. And 
Next one's fouled out. Almost hit the lights on the foul pole here. Went over the Bobcat dugout. That'll slow dribble over by the big tree near the Agri building. For those that are familiar here with the uh, Bobcat field. Outside pitch. It's going to be a full count now. Here comes the 70th pitch of the day for Reedy Mack. Going after the leadoff hitter, Scott Wright. Chops it foul again. Almost the same location as the one earlier. Bobcat bench is uh, very busy running after these things. See the defensive alignment. Again, runners at second and third. Two on in scoring position for Wright. Chops this one foul this time over the left side, over the Mohawk dugout. Bounces off the gravel road and shoots out to the ditch. Almost hit their bus over there. I don't know if we have an angle. We don't really have an angle to see that. So, Inside, and that's a walk. Good job by the leadoff hitter. Scott Wright, now your two-hole hitter. The pitcher, Ashton Lemons, can really help out his uh, – Help himself out here, and Billy Joe Seal wants to talk to him. They're calling a certain uh, number here. One down, dangerous spot to be in for the Bobcats. You see the defensive alignment here. Base is juice full of Mohawks. Nowhere to put them now. you got to attack this guy, Ashton Lemons. Base hit almost for sure scores two. And with right speed, depending on where it's at, especially if it's in a gap, you're probably you may score three. Again, depending on where it's hit. Obviously, an infield hit isn't gonna isn't gonna score that many, but you get a hit in the outfield with right speed. Who knows? Speaking of, that ball is blistered over to the right side. Right fielder coming in and catches it for out number two. No tag from the third baseman either. Great job out there, and I believe that's Jake Veneta. Great job, Jake Veneta. Again, we don't have a cameraman here. I wish we did because he had to come on strong there. I mean, really strong. That ball was hit hard, and it was telling down. It had that the over-the-top spin, so I just knew it was going to bounce in there. And that scores, too, if it does, more than likely because there's good speed at second. Big-time hitter coming up here now for the Mohawks, the righty. Lucas, it's McMaster's lefty on righty. Hard hit to deep center field. Left center, that may go, and it does. Touch them all. Will Lucas, slam a -a -a ding-dong, grand slam for the Mohawks. Third baseman, Will I Am. Holy hay bells, what a shot. And it's a different ball game now, folks. Wow. That ball was a rocket. I mean, it had a motor on it. Now, of course, there is some wind today, but, man, even even without the wind, I think that ball's over the fence. Heck of a job from Lucas. He wasted no time on that. Now, all of a sudden, five-run game. Totally different feel now. Put that on the highlight reel, though, uh, Will Lucas. Heck of a job, young man. Sorry, guys, I had to go to the dentist today, and uh, they numb me up. And Boy, it's hard for me to talk a whole lot out here. I know it's kind of a rarity for me, but uh, struggling with it today. Another base knock. He just kind of poked it out to right field. It's going to go to the fence. That's probably going to be a double, and it is. Now they're telling him to go three, and he is going three. The cutoff finally. The relay, good relay, but not in time, and that's going to be another base knock. Man, just like that, this is a completely different game. And we're going to have a mound visit now. See Coach Kyle George with the entire infield. I'm going to tell you what, Veneta to Cummings there got that ball in quick. That ball was a gapper. 
He did a good job of going inside out there, did Tompkins. And it had enough on it to get in between the gap and actually get to the fence. Veneta got there in a hurry. I thought they had a play on him at third. I really did, and it was awful close. The, a good relay, and then Cummings, I mean, had a heck of a job uh, getting it over to third there, but just not in time. And I think Tompkins was thinking three the whole way. I really do. They're going to leave McMasters in. He's at 77 pitches here. You got Latrell up, right fielder for the Mohawks. First pitch a little low. Tell you what, you got an opportunity here to play another one in this inning for the Mohawks. The runner on third. Swung through and missed. We already had a pretty good breeze, and that was a good, good healthy cut there from Latrell giving us some more of a breeze there. Master sets, fires high. Foul ball. Dead center behind us here for a strike. I've got the count wrong. I apologize, guys. It's 1-2, it's two, not 2-1. Two, I hit the wrong button there. i got too much stuff going on over here. Again, runner on third. You see him right there. Here comes the pitch. Outside off speed. Good job by Rapert getting there. Kenny Francis is watching. Fallen Winscott says, let's go. Amanda Mahon says, wow, good job, Will. Are you in a kid? That was a heck of a shot there from Will. Strike three. Big, big pitch there from Reed McMasters. However, the Mohawks did some damage for sure. As you look at your line score now, they plated four off of a big smash. I mean, a big-time smash from Will I am. Planted it out there past the road. Out in the left center. We'll call it more center than left, I guess. Probably we'll, we'll call it center field, yeah. I mean, it was a shot. It was definitely. And like I said, I know the wind's blowing out that way a little bit today, but honestly, without the wind, that ball's gone. I mean, he absolutely hammered it. Muscled that one out. Kenneth Hill says, good job, guys. He's talking about our Bobcats. And, and so far, they're hey, listen, the Bobcats still have a lead. I mean, they have scored, in, and you see it right there. I'm just going to say they scored in every, every inning according to my, my paperwork here, but we'll look at it on the graphic there. You can see it right there, obviously. They've scored in every inning, and they may they may have to continue doing that if Pickett's uh, bats are waking up, and it looks like they have. It'll be interesting to me to see in this next, in this top half of this inning, what's going to happen. top half of the fifth inning will be really interesting to me. I had to correct a score on there is why it shows something there in the bottom of the fourth. So I apologize for that. That was something on my end I had to correct. So I had to put that in then. But um, but it'll be interesting to me. What I was trying to get to is it'll be interesting to me in the top half of this next inning to see who's pitching for the Bobcats. Appreciate everybody for tuning in with us. Wanda Roark, Courtney Hovis. Leading off of the Bobcats will be Rodney Rapert. And the bottom of the fourth inning. Again, we have junior high action after this, and I will do everything I can to stay here with you. I'm just a little bit nervous about our equipment being out in the rain. Um, but if this one ends quick, we'll definitely stay here no matter what. Um, but if it starts raining, I'm going to have to just start cutting stuff down and getting it out. i got a, I got a camera. That camera you're looking at right there is about 375 uh, feet from where I'm at, and i got to walk all the way around or run all the way around to get it. This one's over there past the uh, dugout of the uh, Mohawks. I have to get that one. The one right here is actually on the other side of the fence from me, so I'd have to run around and get it too. Um, a lot of stuff that we do here to give you these games the way we give them to you. Uh, not just a typical iPhone up against the fence here. We try to do it the right way if we can. And unfortunately, it's just me to here today. Just me and, of course, my IT guy checking on me from afar. Colton Luddyman, I appreciate him. That ball's low and in the dirt. Almost went off the shoe there. It kind of trickles back here to the backstop. And the umpire's going to go get it. Boy, if you're the on-deck hitter there, you want to hustle and get that. The last thing you want is the umpire having to go back there to get that. <laughs> 
the little nuances of, uh, of baseball. You want to kind of suck up that umpire the best you can. And that'll be, uh, if it didn't hit him, it may have hit him. We'll watch the replay. But either way, it's going to be ball four. It's going to be a runner on first base. Good job by Raper. Let's watch it again. Again, I'm in a really bad spot where I'm at. It's hard for me to see hardly anything. It did hit him. It clearly hit him. But, again, from where I'm at, I couldn't hardly see that. So now we're going to have a pitching change for the Mohawks, it looks like. I see Rodney Raper and Drew Ratcliffe over there at first base. You see catcher Walker Johnson on the mound there. Who he's, who's he going to welcome here? Is that uh, Will Lucas? No, that is actually. Yes, that is Will Lucas. Yep. So Will Lucas is coming in. So I will change pitchers, or what I'll do is I'll change the pitch count for Piggott. We'll do that real quick. Here we go. Right down Lemons, uh, three innings. And now Will Lucas is coming into pitch. Not sure where Lemons went. I think he might have went to shortstop, maybe. Yeah, shortstop is what it looks like to me. Trying to figure out where that pushes Scott Wright to. I haven't seen him yet. He may be out in center. Oh. I think Scott Wright's in center. I don't know. It's I, it's hard for me to tell. I can't hardly see anything out here. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? But anyways, either way, new pitcher for the Mohawks. All right, here we go. Remember, bottom of the fourth. Conference 3A3 game. The first pitch is taken. It's going to be a bunt. Throw down a second, not in time. It gets away, too. Good steal down there, and I believe, is that Braden Hollis? I think it is Braden Hollis over there at second. He was the pinch runner. Pretty sure it's 17. Well, it's hard to tell from where I'm at. Yes, that is 17. Sorry, guys. I'll eventually get this right. Is it 1-0 or 0-1? That ball gets away from the catcher. Hollis will advance to third. It's 2-0. Two O's our count. Sorry, I was trying to help the scoreboard. And base rip over the shortstop's head, over Lemon's head. It's going to be an RBI, at least single. Price going for two. He's going to have a stand-up double. Great job, young man. How about the freshman right here? He is roping. Good job, Isaiah. Freshman is roping right now. Roping and raking. Will came in to pitch. Will Lucas after a big, big, big top half of the inning where he went yard out in center. We're going to call it more center than a lot of people would say left center, but, no, I think that's more center. I mean, he hit a he hit a bomb, guys, and it wasn't no high. I mean, it was a line drive. I don't know what our camera just did there. A little chopper past the pitcher. Second baseman bobbles it down. He's going to have a base hit. Oh, baby. Dowdy with an infield hit. He legs it out. How about that? <laughs> I want to tell you something. The kid runs hard, man. He really does. I love it. Got to give Dowdy some credit, man. How about that? Brady chops one back here to the backstop. Got to get my runner on first graphic. There we go. Got too much stuff going on up here. Emily Morrow's watching. Ronda Rourke is watching. Don Burkhart and Samantha Denton also watching. Let us know where you're tuning in from, guys, if you don't mind. And share that feed for us. 
Lucas, the righty up against Russell. One hopper in the dirt. Boy, it went off. I tell you what, be careful there, Walker Johnson. He put his right hand up. I don't know if y'all saw that. Put his right hand up. That's the last thing I want to do is get that hand in there. That could have been dangerous. There's the pitch outside. Good eye by Russell. And I believe that's two when I had your count wrong, too. I was doing some other stuff here. Lucas from the stretch. Right over Russell's head. Russell had a duck to miss that one. Hitters count here for Brady. He's got runners at the corners. No outs. Got your first two guys on for the Bobcats. That's big. Lucas wasting no time. High pitch ball for good eye by Brady Russell. You got freshmen at the corners, and you've got a senior at second, and you've got the bases juiced for the senior, Cannon Cummings, who's about to be coming up here to the plate. But first, Billy Joe Seal wants to talk to his pitcher. I don't even – well, never mind. He don't want to talk to him. He just said, hey, give me the ball. Well, he is not happy with something. Holy smokes. He just took it right from him. I like it. But we got a new pitcher, so what we'll to reset that pitch count for Pickett yet again. This is pitcher number three for them. And this is going to be Scott Wright, who was the leadoff hitter. He's done a great job at the plate today. So the Pickett pitch count will now reset. Let me reset that. And that was Scott Wright in center field. Lucas Lucas saw three batters, all three reached. And that's probably uh, probably the reason why Mr. Billy Joe Seal is out there in a hurry. Cannot blame him there. You kind of need to keep this game as close as you can here. And remember, listen, we've got weather on the way too. I mean – and it's not like just a typical weather type of thing where you get a lot of rain or something. I mean, it's it's thunderstorm type weather. So the first the first uh, noise they hear from thunder or they see lightning with it, I mean, we're talking about a pretty big. Uh, I want to say it's either thirty minutes or something, or it might, it might be forty five minutes actually um, with lightning. So the last thing you want to do here is get this game out of reach here. And I don't know if they would call it after so many innings or. If they would essentially postpone it for later and then pick up from here, it would be kind of an odd thing to do, I would think. But I honestly don't know the rules on that. Up to bat. Leadoff hitter. Cannon Cummings, a senior. Freshman at the corners. Price, Russell. Dowdy, a senior at second. Ducks in the pond here for Cummings. No out. New pitcher, Scott Wright, right down the heart of the plate. A little off speed and got him. Madison Hill tuning in with us. Big opportunity here for the Bobcats. Chop foul back behind us. And we've got a 1-2 count. I apologize. I didn't get the ball in there. 1-2 count for the Bobcats leadoff hitter, Cannon Cummings. Cannon can really add to the RBI total here with a base knock. Inside almost grazed the shoulder there for ball two. He's worked him inside. Let's see what Wright decides to do here on pitch number five to Cannon. Cannon, lazy fly over past the third baseman foul territory. The shortstop about got it. Holy hay bells. And I believe that's Lemons at shortstop now. He came out of nowhere. And I actually thought for a second he had it. Will Lucas did everything he could, but he would have had to have made a Willie Mays style over the shoulder catch to, to get that one. That would not have been easy. Nowhere to put him here. 2-2. Two, two. Cannon, hard line drive, just foul down the third base line there. Holy smokes, he missed it by a foot maybe. Man. He 
He's pulled two pitches here. Has Cummings. This one pulls it again. This one gets out of play, though, over where the junior high team is practicing, out in the grass near the gravel road. About 20 yards, 15 yards past the visiting dugout. Hard line drive. Almost hit Coach George. That's going to be foul. He is roping these things foul right now. Man, if you're Scott Wright, do something to combat that here. 2-2 two, two count, bases juiced. Steps off the rubber. Big, big at bat here for the Bobcats. Bottom of the fourth, no outs. Cannon, again, another foul ball. And I tell you what, there are a ton of souvenirs now out in the ditch. And three or four of them came from this at bat right here. They're going to get a whole new set of balls here for the umpire. Scott Wright from the stretch. 2-2 pitch to Cummings again. Fouled back again. Staying alive is Cannon Cummings. Wright just cannot get him out. Love the battle here. This is a big-time battle right now. Big-time battle here. The base is juiced. No out. Inside hits him on the knee. And the Bobcats will get not only a run, but uh, the base runner to go along with it. And a hit-by-pitch RBI. A run walked in for Cannon Cummings. That'll bring up 12 gauge. Seth Smith, the lefty. This will be Scott Wright's first lefty to face. Bases full of Bobcats. Still no outs here. Seth swings through a strike. Thirteen to six is your score. In favor of the hometown Bobcats. This rivalry game. Smith can do some damage here. Outside pitch, good eye. Good job by Walker Johnson, who I think is still the catcher. I know a lot of shuffling has gone on. This is pitcher number three for the Mohawks. Seth Smith swings through. I think that was tipped. Yeah, they want to say tipped. <laughs> Doubt he was thinking about it. I, I'm going to tell you something. I have said it a few times, but I love his base running. He has a high IQ when it comes to the base running. Carson Dowdy does. He isn't going to blow you away with the speed. We understand that. But the kid has a high IQ when it comes to knowing when to run, when not to, when to take that chance. One, two, count. Smith! Deposit this one out to right center field. A one hopper to the fence. That's going to probably clear the bases, and it does. Here comes a play at the – no, relay will not go home. Good job by Seth Smith. A three-run triple. 12-gauge. Yes, sir, you betcha. That was big time. 16-6. to six. See him over on third base, 12 and great. Big time hit there by that young man. That brings up Reed McMasters, and he can do some damage here too. Got another Bobcat not too far from home plate here. Base clearing triple from Seth Smith. Big hit. McMasters fouls this one off over the left side. That one probably crossed the ditch. That's probably over there where the antenna is. Pretty close up in the weeds. Should be 1-1. One, one. I apologize, guys. I didn't have my count right there. Base hit right up the middle. It's going to drop, and that's going to be an RBI single for Reed McMasters. Seventeen to six is your score now. As we're in the bottom of the fourth, Ms. 
Miss Kate watching with us. We appreciate her tuning in. Everybody let us know where you're tuning in from if you don't mind. We would appreciate that. Let us know who you're cheering for. Bobcats. Jumping all over these Pickett Mohawk pitchers today. To the tune of 17 runs. That ball inside, I think it hit him. It did hit him. Let's watch the I think it just grazed his elbow. That'll be two runners on. We still don't have any outs, guys. Still no outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. I'm trying to get to our comments here if I can. Runners at first and second for the Bobcats. That'll bring up Isaiah Hollowell. Hollow has reached every time he's been up. Swing in there. Ooh, hope the catcher's okay. That went five hole. That'll be foul for a strike. Take a quick drink here if I can. That ball hit out high. It's going to be foul, but it's playable for the left fielder, and he just misses it. Probably a couple steps off was Tompkins. Uh, Lawson Tompkins out there in left field. I don't know if you could see it or not from that camera view, but 0 oh, 2 count now against Isaiah Hollowell. Here comes the delivery from right. Chopped to the third baseman, goes to his left side. Off of a knee, it's going to be a base hit, an infield hit. By Isaiah Hollowell, and he was hustling down the bag or down the baseline to the bag, I promise you. He was kicking the grass clippings up there and, and the dust as he got to the box. Good job by Isaiah. You see him over there on first. Now the bases are juiced with no outs for senior Rodney Rapert to do some damage. Rodney got on last time with a walk, had a good eye. That one low, but just clips the plate there for a strike from Scott Wright. See them full of Bobcats there. Oh, boy, my goodness. That ball was absolutely scorched. Absolutely hammered from Raper, but it was foul. It was on the inside, right on his hands. I honestly thought it was going to hit him. Quick bat, though, from Rapert. And now he takes a pitch outside. Good locations there from right. He comes way inside, then goes way outside. Different eye levels for sure. Well, if Rapert gets another one like that, my goodness. Again, hard line drive, but it's going to be foul. I'm going to tell you something. If he elevates that a little bit, gets it fair, that ball's gone. I mean, this is some serious pop right now all of a sudden from Rodney Rapert. Exit Velo was really high on these last two pitches he's hit. Chops this one foul over us. And staying alive is the senior catcher for the Bobcats. And now we are out of baseballs. And uh, the dugout will have to bring one in play, and they do. That we've had 30 foul balls this game. Bases full of Bobcats. Here comes the pitch from right. High pop fly in. That's an infield fly roll right there, or at least it should be. Either way, Lucas does make the catch. Well, if he could have lined it out like he did a couple of those foul balls, probably would have went a pretty good ways. And I tell you what. Will Lucas did a great job there. I know it's an infield fly either way, but these, this wind has been playing some tricks on these guys, and that was a high fly ball there. He did a good job of collecting under it and chasing it down. And they need that on-deck bat to get out of the way, and Dowdy says, uh, I'll handle that for you. Much obliged. Base is juiced, one down. Ty Price swinging through one. That was a low strike, but it was in there for a strike. Into the old sand wedge to hit that one, did Price. Boy, he put everything he had into that one, didn't he? You can tell he wants this. Oh, hard hit. That ball's going to go foul. I tell you what, if it's down the line, 
Ty Price, <laughs> and if it had been down the line and fair, it might have been a home run too. Two deep, hard foul balls. And again, we're running out of baseballs here, so we're getting them from the dugout now being thrown in. Usually the umpire will have about a handful of them they'll bring in, but they're just they're just trying to survive <laughs> right now with these baseballs. We've had so many foul balls today. It's been unbelievable. You see right. I already hit the 30 mark on the pitch count. Pitching to the freshman, Ty Price. 0-2 count. Chopper to the shortstop. He catches it. Play at third. There's an out there. That's the only play they get, though. They do get one out. However, a run comes across the home, and that'll be an RBI for Ty Price. Bring up Carson Dowdy. Runners on first and second now, two outs. Swings way out there. I don't think he ever had a chance to get to that one, but he sure tried. And it's an 0 1 count. And I've got 18 to 6 as the official score, but. I'll get with Shelly and see what uh, little chopper over the head of the pitcher. Here comes the second baseman to play at first for the third out. And we have played four innings of baseball here in God's country. Oops, we lost that camera, so let me turn it back on. And I'm going to get your line score for you, as I believe it's 18-6. to six. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to get this camera on. There we go. All right, we got our beauty shot camera back. We'll go to it real quick. Natalie Murray says, go Ty. Well, he's definitely been going. Bucky Hayes and Natasha Kazi watching. Jim Earl Jones. Kaylin Rogers watching with us as well. Kaylee Lauren Rogers, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. And I'm going to go to YouTube. I hadn't done that in a while, so that may not be a bad idea, right? You'll see some pitches here from Reed McMasters. Again, we got some weather coming on its way tonight. Alan Rabjohn says, let's go Mohawks. And Miranda says, says Mop Hawks. Yeah, we spelt that one wrong, Miranda. We took us a while to figure that out, but we got that one figured out finally. I thought that was funny, too. It wasn't, it wasn't on purpose or anything. It was just a fat finger type of deal there. But, uh, yeah, I like I like that you noticed that, though. At least you caught on to it. At least somebody's paying attention to us over here, you know. It makes us feel good. Several cameras here today, just nobody to run them. Just me sitting here. By myself, talking to you guys, just having a good time. We're just all having a good time. That's what we're doing. Well, I can smell this food back in the concession stands really, really getting to me. I might go off the headset just to get something to eat, guys. I'm sure y'all wouldn't mind. <laughs> 18 to 6 is your score right now. Top of the fifth coming up. And that will be Cole James, your batter. He will lead it off this inning for the Mohawks. First pitch in for a ball. Reed McMasters, we talked about this the last half inning. We didn't know if who would be the pitcher. Uh, it would be interesting, but Reed is still out there. The lefty who started this game. Still going strong here. He has given up six, give up four the last inning. But it has been crooked number after crooked number for this Corning offense today. Three in the first, four in the second, four in the third, and seven in the fourth inning as they have gotten into the proverbial bullpen, if you will, of the Mohawks, not the Mopox. Miranda will get a kick out of that. 2-1 count swung through. And just like that, two strikes now on Cole James, first baseman for the Piggott Mohawks. 
Big conference game here, too. I think Pickett came in two and two. Hard chopper backhanded by Price. He spins around, throws across the diamond in time. Great job by Ty Price. Sorry, guys, I got a message one of our uh, workers here. High fly behind the concession stand here for a strike. That's by Lawson Tompkins. No, actually, I'm sorry. That's Walker Johnson. That's the catcher for the Mohawks, Walker Johnson. Next win for a strike. Dalton Hollingsworth says, let's go Bobcats from Erie, Pennsylvania. And a strikeout from Reed McMasters. We're out number two here in this top half of the fifth inning. And I can't remember the run rule uh, numbers, but I don't know if it's, if it's ten after or five. I don't know what it is, but this very possible could be the game here. This is Bl uh, Blasco up for Piggott. Marcus Blasco, and he swings at the first one a little high, but swings through. How about Reed McMasters today? He's gotten in some trouble at times. Gave up the big, big crush from uh, Will Lucas, but for the most part, has always battled back, and that's what he's doing right now. David Ladd watching. Darren Miller also watching. Let's see if Reed can get out of this inning here. Unscathed. High and outside and swung through for a strikeout. And, folks, I think that will be the ball game. I believe that is the ball game. Congratulations to the Corning Bobcats. We'll get your graphic up there right now on their big win over the Piggott Mohawks, the rival Piggott Mohawks. Big, big win there. That'll move them up to two and two in conference. That'll move to Piggott to two and three in conference. Excellent stuff from Corning to get that win. You see the junior high teams getting ready. You see the handshake line there. Get a little bit of both of them from that view there. See the coaches also getting together, converging and handshaking. All right, guys. Again, here's your final score one more time. We'll put it up there. 18 runs for the Bobcats on 15 hits and one error. Six runs for Piggott on seven hits and two errors. And those two errors were costly for Piggott early on. Reed McMasters pitches a complete game. Gets the win, obviously. And I tell you what, great stuff offensively, but I want to talk about defensively. The defense played really good behind Reed McMasters today, and it was not easy to play good, especially with the win, the gusting win, uh, on and off it the way it was. Impressive stuff by the Bobcat defense there. Guys, I tell you what, that was a lot of fun. Obviously, anytime you can beat your rivals, it's a lot of fun. Pick up, go to four and five overall, two and three in conference. Corning will go to four and two overall and two and two in conference with this win. Again, I want to say thank you to our sponsors. We could not do it without our sponsors. We're going to put them up there on the graphic real quick and uh, give them some love. And while we're talking about the sponsors, we're going to send you out to our sponsor video. I've got to somehow clear this scoreboard somehow to get it ready for the next game. I don't know how to do that without starting a new, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, so I'll work on that. I'll work on clearing this scoreboard. And I'm going to do everything I can for you folks that are parents, um, grandparents, uh, alumni, fans of the junior high kids that are about to play. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to, to kind of hang on with you. Um, I may take down a camera or two um, in between here just to kind of in case this rain comes up on us really quick. And uh, I just don't want to be uh, scrounging around trying to get this all done and, and have equipment out in the rain. So I may take down a few cameras here um, but uh, when I come back. But we'll definitely try to get this junior high game in uh, if we if we all, if we we all at all can. I, I don't know where the rain's at right now. I don't know how close it is to us right now. But 
we're going to try our best to uh, stick with you. So, guys, again, Bobcats a winner in this rivalry game. It's 3A3 game, 18 to 6 over Pickett here at home. But stay with us. We got junior high action. Right at 807819. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. <laughs>
For 85 years, Clay County Electric has powered our community with a legacy of excellent service. And now you get power and connectivity with the same great service you've come to expect. Clay County Connect brings the world to your fingertips with reliable, affordable, high-speed broadband internet. The best part? You get the same great local service that has defined us for decades. To learn more on how we can best serve you, visit us online or call 870-857-3521. Let's give it up for Leonard's Paintless Dent and One Shield Repair. This is Eric Leonard's second year sponsors here at CSR. Call or text Eric for all of your automotive glass needs, rock chip repairs, windshield replacement, glass replacement, and headlight restoration. They accept insurance and are mobile. Hey, they serve all of the Clay County and surrounding areas. So call or text Eric today at 870-323-0100. Four one. Eric wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. He says, go Bobcats, go. Malone Custom Designs has a new spot downtown, and we'd love for you to come by. With our laser engraving machines, we can personalize almost any gift in our store. We do caps, knives, keychains, tumblers, stickers, decals, business cards, banners, and more. While you're here, consider booking a photography session in our new studio. Visit us at 421 Southwest 2nd Street in Corning, and let's make something special. Depression, anxiety, PTSD, and other mental disorders can separate us from the ones we love most. We can feel lost, distant, and detached from our lives. At Affinity Counseling Services, your ability to reconnect with life and loved ones is our priority. We provide in-office and telehealth services at each of our locations in Piggott, Corning, and Kennett, Missouri. Sign up for services now at counselingwithaffinity.com. Hey, a big shout out to Farm Service Incorporated here in Northeast Arkansas out of Corning and Noble. We appreciate them jumping on board with us here at Corning Sports Report. At Farm Service Inc., we strive to provide advanced agricultural technology with quality personalized service right here in Northeast Arkansas and Southeast Missouri. With our selection of brand name products and service technology, you can count on us 
to help your profits grow. They also want to mention they sell fertilized, chemical seed, farm supplies, fuel, and offer custom application. Farm Service Incorporated want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the season. You can't be everywhere at once, but we can be anywhere you are. The Anywhere app by First National Bank. Putting you first, always. Clay County Connect is powered by Clay County Electric, bringing high-speed internet to rural communities in Northeast Arkansas. We chose Clay County Connect for our internet service. Number one, it's fiber to the house. Number two, the great local service they provide. We still have local service. All right, guys, we're back here with some junior high action, Corning and Piggott. Your two teams going at it. The first pitch is a ball. I don't have rosters for either team, but that'll be okay. Second pitch outside for the ball as well. I've got 3-0. Oh, it should be 2-0. Oh, I apologize. Let's change that. Let's do that right now. Chopper to the third baseman across the diamond in time. Sorry, I about missed that for you guys. Apologize. And the leadoff runner is out. On the play. On the ground out. I'm trying to get some information to my staff at uh, CSR, so y'all bear with me here, guys. I'm trying, I'm trying to multitask here, and that's not easy to do for me. Second pitch also. For a ball. Again, we got some weather coming, so I took out a few of the uh, a few of the cameras um, that we had early on. There's a strike to throw there. Good throw, young man. I can't even tell who's I don't know if that's Jed on the mat. I can't tell who that is from here. But either way, two one count here. One down, swung through it was the Mohawk batter. Now it's two two. I believe that final score of our game earlier was 18 to 6 if I'm not mistaken in favor of our Bobcats big 3A3 game pitch in the dirt gets away from the catcher umpire tosses another one to the pitcher I believe that is Jackson Jett if I'm not mistaken pitching and I believe that is correct yeah strike three good pitch there from Jett and just like that, two up, two down. I thought I heard thunder there for a second, but someone started up their uh, heavy-duty truck with a diesel engine, evidently, and, and fooled me. How dare them. Another strike. Very animated strike calls, too, I might add, from the umpire. I love when they get into it like that. I know that exciting. Oh, curveball in there for a strike. Caught the corner of the plate as it came in. Nice pitch there from Jet. And strike three, a great inning for the Bobcats. And we'll get you a line score there. As we've just started, we're going to go to the bottom of the first. And this is junior high action. Sorry, my staff is giving me a hard time. None of them are here to help, but they're giving me a hard time, so I had to go back at them there real quick. All right, we play.
played uh, the top half. And we are getting ready for the bottom half now of this inning. Again, just me here by myself. I will have, I took down two cameras. I took down the pitcher camera and then the camera that showed the infield from the left side. So we're down to three cameras now. We're down to that camera right there. We're down to this camera right here. And then a camera that'll show any plays that are close at first base there. So that's what we are down to now. We'll keep you at this camera for just a second. Actually, we'll go to this one. Well, I'm trying to get rid of some of this stuff. I was trying to get some of my equipment inside so if the rain came all at once, at least I'd have less to, to put up. Uh, I think I can probably get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. All right. You guys will probably hear me go on and off the headsets here. Again, just me here today. of the first inning here in this junior high action. Let me find a way to get junior high on there somewhere. I think I have an idea. Y'all bear with me here a second. Got it up there now. We had room for that, so let's throw it up there. Two, one is our count. And I will stay here as long as I can with you guys. But again, if we have uh, if we have a lot of expensive equipment out here right now, I'd hate to uh, I'd hate to damage any of that. So if it gets close to uh, if it gets close to uh, to hitting us here, if we start feeling some rain. I'm probably going to go off the headset, start taking down some cameras, um, getting the heck out of here. To be honest with you, as we got a runner on first here, apologize, guys. I'm not uh, trying to get a few things out there. There we go. Got your runner on first right there, and here we go. two-hole hitter again don't have rosters the runner is going and ball taken high and the runner advances to second Kimberly McComb says let's go Bobcats number 23 is mine I like that Don Hollingsworth said great win he's talking about the Bobcats in the senior high game Kyle Williams said good win as well Stephen Jones says a great game, Bobcats. Dalton Hollingsworth says, love watching me some Bobcats sports and listening to you. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that, brother. You're a good man, and I appreciate you for saying that. Really do. Fouled straight back to us here, just above me here. That'll go down as a strike. And it'll be 1-1 one, one is your count on the two-hole hitter for the Bobcats. Again, no rosters. I'll kind of reiterate that a few times in case the – parents or grandparents or whoever's wondering why I'm not uh, mentioning any names or anything. That ball's hit right up the middle for a base hit. And I think that's going to score a run. Here comes a run around third. A throw to home. Actually going to cut off at the pitcher's mound. And that will score a run. An RBI single for the Bobcats. And just like that, the Bobcats are on the board here in the bottom of the first. And your three-hole hitter now for corner. They're going to check on the runner at first instead. He's back, gets his time called. Pitcher's going to walk back to the mound now. As Louise Wright says, go number 12, Eli Wright. Can't go wrong with Eli Wright. 
Darren Miller on with this Parker Davis. Runner is going high pitch, no throw, and that'll be a stolen base for the Bobcats. I like that they do the junior high games now after the senior high games because, you know, if our staff is here and we don't have a lot going on, we can actually hang around and get get some of these games in. Uh, obviously, tonight's kind of a unique situation. we got a ton of rain coming, but um, I'm going to hang here as long as I can. I don't want to risk, you know, obviously uh, tearing up any equipment or anything, but, um, but I do like that. You know, on some nights, whoever's here, whether it's Colton or Rich or, Whoever may be here helping us, uh, they may not be able to stay, but on nights they can, at least you're able to see some action from these junior high kids. And, guys, there are very, very few people. I, I can't even think of who across the state does any live streaming for junior high baseball. So so kudos to whoever thought. Oh, great hit out in left field. That's going to be a at least a double RBI, maybe a triple. Great job, young man. Again, I don't have uh, – don't have rosters, but that might have been that might have been Eli. That's right. Tell me if that was Eli again. I ha have not seen these kids play, and uh, don't have rosters. I think it might have been. But either way, again, but kudos to whoever started having these games on the same night as the senior high teams because now it allows us at least an opportunity again we may not be able to get to those games sometimes if, if our staff has stuff to do or whatever it may be but um, at least we have an opportunity at it now whereas in the past we really didn't even have a chance at it so high pitch in for a ball you see the runner up there at second for the Bobcats this is the bottom of the first you see on your scoreboard runner at second no outs and the runners going Ball chop foul. And for some reason, my pitch count. <laughs> that is not right. That is not right. I have no idea what it is. He's probably thrown 15 pitches probably. I'm just guessing. So bear with me, guys. That ball gets past the catcher. Runner's going to advance to third. He's going to circle and even look possibly going home as ball number two comes through the plate there. And then past the plate as the catcher could not corral that one. And she said, yes, Eli. Kimberly McCombs said, great job, Eli. Paul Segrade is watching with us. Colton Leonard, Darren Miller. Appreciate everybody for tuning in with us. Yeah, I took down two cameras um, that we would have had for this, um, that we had for the senior high game that we won't have for this game just to, just to get ready for this weather that's coming. Got number five up here for the Bobcats. 3-1 count. Got him a hitter's count here. Does number five. Let's see what he can do with it. Corning in the black jerseys. Pickett in the pinstripe maroon and gray jerseys. And that's going to be a walk. Put the runners on the corners now. First and third for the Bobcats with no outs here in the bottom of the first. He gets a fist pump from Drew Radcliffe. And number seven in black comes to the plate. Gets his instructions from Coach George. We'll see if they try to do a steal here with runners at the corners. Here comes the first pitch they do. Runner takes off. Ball bounces off the plate, bounces off the catcher. Here comes the runner. And sliding at home safe is Eli Wright with a cloud of dust. How about that? Also, the runner advanced to third on that. Remember, he started at first and was just trying to steal seconds all he was doing. And he ends up at third. And they're going to run out and look at the pitcher here, maybe a little quick talk to the pitcher maybe, maybe just to kind of calm him down just a little bit. There you go. I like that. Tell him, hey, you're okay, big dog. You're all right. one -oh count here. 3 nothing score in the bottom of the first inning. Good old rivalry game. Hard hit to center field. The center fielder's under it. No, it goes over him. It gets past him. He was camped under it, I thought. And the wind may have gotten a hold of that one. Rounding second going to third is the Bobcat hitter, and that's going to be a stand-up triple, an RBI 
triple at that. Hello. That ball was roped. And listen, I know we can say all we want, but, man, with the wind doing what it's doing today, these outfielders, bless their hearts, it is, it's already a hard enough job, but it's a really hard job with this wind. So I'm – I'm not – if I'm a coach, I'm not upset at the kid there. Honestly, I thought he had it there for a second. It looked like he had camped on it pretty good, had a beat on it. But, again, this wind will gust, and then it will stop, and then it will gust again. and It's pretty tough. Speaking of tough, that was a tough-looking pitch right there. Great pitch by number five in red. Again, don't have, uh, don't have any rosters, so I apologize. So if anybody wants to give a shout-out to their kid, grandkids, whoever, let us know if that was them getting a hit or making a play on defense, whatever it may be. Oh, one pitch, and that's going to be in for a ball. One one's the count. Just three cameras uh, now. We had five or six to start with, and just got these cameras now, but we're going to rock and roll with them. I actually have a really good crowd here for this game. Outside pitch. In fact, um, I'm going I'm to say almost everybody that was here watching senior high games has stayed. I think they've kind of stayed. It's a, it's a perfect weather as far as from a temperature standpoint with the, with the breeze on and off. Now here in about an hour or two, that might be a different animal. Oh, right over the head, ducking under. It's the uh, Bobcat batter. Just a bit inside. <laughs> That's what we'll call that one. <laughs> Kimberly McCollum says, let's go Bentley. Love it. 3-1 count here for the Mohawks. Chopped foul over towards the Mohawks dugout. Staying alive. There's the pitcher for Piggott. Heather Seagrave says, way to go, Mohawks pitcher Lane Murray. I like that. How about that? Lane Murray. And I think uh, Miss George is trying to help me out here. She is giving me – oh, she's giving me rosters. Very good. Well, heck, yeah. Thank you, Miss George. Uh, if you're listening, hi, chopper foul back behind us. It's going to miss my van, thank goodness. We'd hate to hit the old company creeper van. I mean, that might hurt the value. Um, it'd go from being worth $300 to – actually, it'd probably add value somehow. Hey, everyone makes fun of our van. You know, I love it. I love it. All right, so now that I've got some rosters, now we're going to have some fun. By gallies. Okay. I've got them in two different picture uh, picture photos here, so I'll have to kind of go back and forth. Chopped foul. You, hey, thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, sir. Mr. Andy Jed also helping me out. Look at everybody taking care of me here, man. Everybody taking care of me here. All right, so I think that's Bentley Armour, too, that is. If I'm looking at this roster, uh, yeah. Bentley Armour, too, I got there. Awesome. Thanks to Miss George. And uh, Mr. Jet, Andy Jet, uh, for helping me out there. Thank you, guys. All right, three-two count, full count. Here's the pitch. Oh my goodness, that ball was ripped foul. Bad time to be a car parked down the left field line. Holy smokes! Armert uh, ambushed that thing. <laughs> he hit it like it uh, it owed him money or something. Hello. I like this umpire. I like both. These guys have done a great job today. Um, and this one's really animated. I, I don't think I've seen him before uh, here, to be honest with you. Again, Bentley Armour, number 23, at the plate. And someone had just told us who the pitcher was, too. Um, nice pitch there. High chopper. It's going to be foul. But can the left fielder get there? It's fouled by a foot, and the left fielder could not get there. That was Heather Seagrave. She said Lane Murray um, is the pitcher. So... I'll get something to ride on real quick. All right, I got me something to ride on here. Lane Murray with the pitch. Goes right off the helmet. And actually, that probably benefited. I know that sounds silly. I think that actually benefited them there because if it doesn't hit him in the head, I don't know if the catcher can get to it. And that's a run. At least it might have possibly saved a run. All right, so I'm going to write this down real quick while I've got a chance. Is Lane Murray is the pitcher for Pickett. Okay, there we go. I got it. 
Thank you, guys. Inside, and it hits him. Another hit by pitch. And the bases will now be loaded full of Bobcats. And I believe that was going to be number four, Lane Lucas, who just took one. And now number six, Caleb Carotlo, is going to come in here to hit with the bases juice as the coach is going to say, hey, we're going to do a little bit of a pitching change here. And the pitcher is no longer Lane Murray. And I'm not sure who that pitcher is. It's number 13. If any of you Pickett fans know, I'm trying to get this roster written down for Corning so I ain't got to use my phone. I can use my phone for the engagement with you guys. Okay, so 23. Yeah, so if anybody at Pickett knows who this number 13 is, please let me know, guys, if y'all don't mind. I'm going to hurry up and write these down if I can. <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> oh, I love our fans. I'm not talking because I'm trying to route these rosters, and I promise I'm still here with you guys. I'm not going to leave you. Unless it starts pouring down rain, then I am going to leave you. I'm going to go up and grab those cameras, but I'll still leave this one on as long as I possibly can, but um, I'll get the other ones. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Okay, so six is Caleb Carrasco, and I believe he's – I think he's up to bat next, actually. Four was Lane, Lane Lucas, yeah. Okay. Um, seven is Rex Sherd. And then five is TJ Small. Perfect. And that one is – Back off the uh, back fence here, obviously a ball. Oops, oh, sorry, guys, i got to turn that camera back on. Sorry, it goes off every once in a while on me. It's, uh, I don't have the right ampage on the, the charging uh, battery pack, so sorry about that. All right, now we're good. Okay, so now I've got all of Corning's, I'm pretty sure. And now if someone could help me with the pitcher for, um, for Piggott, that would be awesome. So if any Pickett fans that are watching, he's number 13 in red. Caden Raymer, thank you, Alan. There we go. Caden Raymer, very good. All right, so Caden's pitch is outside in the dirt. Good job by the catcher there. Taking care of that one. Again, Corotlo's up to bat right now. It's Caleb Corotlo. Big thanks to Andy Jett and Miss George there for taking care of me on the rosters there. And a lefty, how about this? Outside gets past the catcher. Of course, that's ball four. So that will bring in a run for the Bobcats. But, again, if it gets way past him, though, and that guy from second to third starts coming around, never know, he might score. Now, either way, in junior high, I assume five runs is all they're going to give him, and that is exactly correct. So what we'll do is here we'll do a, an out, another out, and then a top of the next inning so we'll change this over to the top of the second there we go and we've got a five nothing score here Amanda Goss watching with us Alan Rab John is taking care of me on the uh, um, on the names and the rosters appreciate that he also says Peyton Winscott is watching well thanks Peyton for tuning in buddy uh, we appreciate Peyton uh, Heather Sergage is watching Sheila Leach John Jett said the number one is Jackson Jett uh, Matt Allen tuning in with us uh, Kimberly McCollum uh, and I got one of my classmates behind me. That's Nikki Meredith Stadler. She's here. Obviously, I'm sure she's here watching number three, Briar Stadler. It's so cool. I'm at the age now. It sounds cheesy, I know, but I'm at the age now where I'm seeing these names. I'm like, hey, I grew up with that person. <laughs> you know, and it's like, you remember what they were like, you know. Of course, Nikki, good athlete back in her day, and and you're like, I bet, I bet she's got some of her mom. Uh, I bet he's got some of his mom's athletic ability, and it's just kind of neat uh, how that happens. And uh, I'm actually to that age now. Never thought I'd be there, but here we are. Grew up with a few of these people and their family members, whether it be parents or whoever, uncles, aunts. 
All right, so I'm trying to see what number that is pitching. I guess I could use my camera here, huh? Yeah, Jackson Jet. I tell you what, some days it's just uh, not all up there in the mental capacity standpoint for me, but that is definitely Jackson Jet. And he's, I tell you what, he's pumping strikes right now, man. We saw the second and third batter that last inning, man, throwing strikes left and right and getting them in there. Alan Ravjohn said number two is pay. Okay, good. Okay, so up to bat right now is Winscott. That's number two. Peyton Winscott. This kid can play. I know that. I talked to his uh, parents. This kid can play. I think it's two balls and one strike. Let me fix that. Sorry. All right, outside pitch from Jet to Winscott. That'll make it 3-1. And all of a sudden, Winscott, Mr. Peyton, has got himself a hitter's count. Let's see what he can do with it. This is a good-looking kid, man. Kind of those lanky arms. If he ever gets around on one, be careful. They pitch around him there, and he's going to go to first as Wynn Scott, and he'll take his base. And uh, Pickett's got him a base runner here, and, in fact, the leadoff runner in this top half of the second inning. And now we got number zero coming up. Allen, if you uh, if you know these, keep keep them coming, brother. Uh, we got number zero up uh, for Pickett. He's bent at the knees, kind of. Turn back uh, a little bit. Some some uh, some hitters will have an open stance. Number zero has kind of a closed stance. The back foot actually trails the front foot a little bit. Still a runner at first. He's going. There's a throw to second, and Tom, and he has got him. Holy Abels. What a throw. But I think it's T.J. Small. Is that a five on his jersey, I think? What a throw. And that was a strike, too, by the way. My goodness. That was impressive. And a strikeout, a backwards K for the second out. And you got to love the umpire. He is getting into it. I don't know if you guys could see that or not. I don't even know if I had you on the right camera angle or not. And our camera just went off again. So bear with me here, guys. First pitch is there for a ball. And number zero is Chase Sanders. Thank you. Chase Sanders. I'll tell you, Alan Rabjohn is uh, saving the day. 1-1 one, one count now. Jackson Jet pitching. And we've got uh, Alan. I'm trying to see who we got up here. Number eight, I believe, is up next, Alan. I don't know if you know that one or not, but if you don't, that's okay. Candace Archer also on with us as well. 2-1 count now. Here's the pitch from Jet, a little outside. And a hitter's count here for number eight for the Mohawks. Remember, junior high baseball here. You got that on your screen there just in case. Ty Blackman. Okay, hey, I know uh, I know a Blackman. Is that any kin to Bo, uh, Allen? So Ty Blackman. So Bo, a few trucks over at Baldwin Chevrolet, or a few vehicles, I should say. Umpire's going to clean the uh, clean the pay, uh, plate there, home plate for us. And uh, you see Blackman on first there, if that is who that is. And Pickett's got him a runner on again. Outside, let's see if they test the arm of uh, TJ Small again, though. That would be interesting to see. Alan said, sorry, that's his dad. Yes, it's Ty. He, he, yes, his son. Okay, thank you, guys. Appreciate that. There's some good people. I've, I've sold them a few vehicles over at Ball and Chevrolet, actually. Uh, really appreciate them. We actually get a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of of people from Pickett that buy, actually. That's a strike there. Good pitch by Jet. I tell you, I'm so impressed by that throw by TJ. Pitch outside, swung through, and right now we got number four up for Piggott. Hey, right, he's up there swinging. I'll give him that. He ain't up. A, he ain't getting cheated here. He's swinging away. He ain't watching them. That's for sure. He's aggressive. Almost got that one, but Jackson throws it by him for strike three, and the Bobcats get through another inning unscathed. And we'll go to the bottom half of the second here in just a second. Before we do that, just want to mention real quick, if I can, I uh, want to give our sponsor some love. By the way, that batter was Carson Callis. 
Collis. Either way, Carson did a he did a good job. He's got a good cut, good swing. Just a little late on it, I think it was what it was, but uh, good swing by that young man. Um, again, record number of sponsors this year. Thank you guys so much for for jumping on board with us. We really do appreciate it. I, and if you uh, if you guys are watching from an entertainment uh, value standpoint, this this umpire is a lot of fun to watch. His mannerisms. He's very vocal. Um, almost like a little bit of a dance when he has a backwards K. It's kind of fun to watch. You see him right there in your screen too. Not sure what the if he's looking for some more baseballs or what they're doing over there, but either way. See Caden Raymer on the mound for the Pickett Mohawks. And he is their pitcher. Again, from a weather standpoint, you could not ask for better baseball weather. Um, again, now the wind has been a different animal. I mean a completely different animal. Um, it has been rough and tough all day. It has caused a lot of problems um, for infielders, for outfielders, uh, for everybody, really. It's kind of calmed down right now, though. I don't know if that's kind of an eerie calm or what that is, but I know it's 6 o'clock. Alan Radjum says, Bo Blackman is an assistant coach. Oh, I, I didn't even... I didn't even know that. I'm looking down and I don't see him. He must be inside the dugout right now. I have to go. I have to go say hi to him before uh, before I leave here. Um, thank you, Alan. Alan's like a just a, a knowledge tree of, of wealth and knowledge. I love it. Appreciate you, Alan. He's got us covered on the picket side, and Andy Jett and Miss George got us covered on the coin side. They got me some rosters, so I feel a lot more comfortable now. Everybody be safe tonight, too, if you can, please. Uh, again, don't know how bad it's going to get here, but everything I'm hearing, it has an opportunity to get bad. So everybody, please be safe, be weather alert. It's been cloudy skies since we got here, really. A uh, little bit of sun earlier when I was setting up, but not much, and it's been all clouds since then. And, of course, a ton of, ton of wind, man, hitting us pretty hard at times. Here we go, bottom of the second inning here in this junior high game. I think the senior high bus is taking off now for Piggott. First pitch from Raymer's a little high. And I believe that's Dawson Leach, I think. I believe that's the number I've seen on the back of that jersey for the Bobcats. The lefty versus a lefty. Base hit. Nope, right to the second baseman, but he drops it. There's going to be a play at first. Is it in time? And it is. Boy, a lot happening on that play. Let's watch the replay. I tell you what, I, I thought the second baseman was shifted over here a little further because I'm right behind everybody, and I can't hardly see anything. And, uh, and then he popped out of the view there of the umpire who was right in front of me, and he had a play at it. Low. Low pitch but it's dug out of the dirt just about for a base hit great job there and I don't have a 17 I don't think unless I missed it did I miss it Heather Seagrave said Burke Swan just made that play at first well Burke heck of a job young man heck of a job that was, that was honestly pretty nice I here goes the runner. He's going to take off. And there's not going to be a throw there. Stolen base for the Bobcats and a ball to boot. I'm trying to find out who 17 is. It bugs me. I may have looked at that wrong, too, though, that roster. I'm going to go back and find that roster real quick. Maybe I just overlooked 17. If so, that's on me. We do have a 7 Rex Sherd, but I'm pretty sure that was a 1 in front of a 7. Either way, it was a great job either way. And that young man is on second now. So we're in the bottom of the second. Good job by the catcher right there. Number five, young man, what a go. I have no idea how he got there. I really don't, but that saved an advancement for sure. And who knows if it caroms wrong there off the backstop. That kid could be going from second to third to home. 
You never know. Great job. That ball's right down there for a strike. Good pitch there by Raymer. That's what you got to have. You know, take something off of it there if you need to. At this point, just trust your defense and throw a strike there on a 3-0 count, and he sure did. Good job, young man. Here comes a 3-1 pitch. That's going to be a ball. Good job. Good eyes there from Breyer Stadler. And Stadler will go to first. And up next will be Bryce Cox, I do believe. As Billy Joel Seal tunes in with us, Vernon Groves, Earthly Morrow, appreciate y'all tuning in with us. First pitch, runner's going to go. Oh. They picked off at first. I apologize. I don't even pay attention. They picked off at first, and the runner from second advanced to third. Now they about lost the ball there on the mound. They do corral it, though. So now runners on the corner. There was no pitch there. I apologize. I'd looked down there at the uh, roster and the messages and looked back up and had a runner going. Didn't know what was going on. Speaking of runner going, there's a runner going to second there. They're going to fake the throw this time. He'll advance with no throw, and that was ball one on the Bobcat hitter, and I think that was Bryce Cox who's at the plate right now. 1-0 count for Bryce. Nicely. It looked like an off-speed pitch there. I couldn't tell. I don't know if it was a curveball necessarily, but definitely had some spin out of the hand for sure. Good pitch by Raymer there. 1-1 one, one count, one out here. Bottom of the second, junior high baseball. A little rivalry game for you, if you will. That's going to go off the knee or the leg. That's going to be a hit by pitch. And the bases are going to be loaded for the Bobcats now. As Bryce Cox goes to first, you see him there. And that will bring up Bryson Murray, the batter for the Bobcats. To play here for just a second as Roger Hovis tunes in with us. Thank uh, Alan Rabjohn and Heather Seagraves for helping us out with all these names and appreciate you guys for Piggott. Bases loaded here. Good opportunity for Bryson, the lefty. And here's a delivery from Raymer, the lefty. It's going to be outside for a ball. I love this time of year, man. Love love the weather. Get to spit in the sunflower seeds this time of year. Good pitch by Raymer. Uh, love love being outside for baseball. I don't know something about baseball. It's just uh, it's hard not to love this sport for sure. There's, just, there's so much to it. It's, it's a chess match. And, and typically speaking, one player isn't going to make a massive difference like it would say in basketball. You, know, you get a really you get a stud player and basketball or you got a good chance to do some damage with only five players on the court but you know at any given time it's it's one on one here pitcher batter I don't know it's just such a unique sport but it's a lot of fun we we love streaming that bounced off the catcher then off of the uh, umpire I hope the umpire's okay I think it's his right leg they do have guards I don't know if you've ever seen an umpire get dressed or not uh, when they start putting those guards on everywhere they get to the chest protector, they've got the shin guard protector. They got one that comes down kind of on top of the shoe there, if you will. They're definitely protected, but still, I'm sure that still he still feels it. Nice hit. It's gonna go over the shortstop's head. It's gonna be shallow left field. It's gonna drop for a base hit. And that will score a run. Good piece of hitting there for the Bobcats. And tack on one more for the boys in black and gold. As Jackson Jett comes to the plate. Good piece of hitting there. Kind of thought that pitch was high and went after it anyways. Great job. As Judy Miller tunes in with us. Here's Raymer with the pitch. A little high. We've got a score of six to nothing here. Bases loaded for the Bobcats. You see that on your screen. A little inside. 
Raymer going high, then going low. I like the different eye locations from Raymer. Let me see the birds. Uh, I don't know if you can, well, you can't see them from there. I don't know if you can see them on that screen or not. Big group of birds there going the uh, opposite way of us. The storm has something to do with that or not, but chop foul by Jackson Jett. got to fix that count. I apologize, guys. That's 2-1, not 1-2. Uh, not 2-1 on Jackson Jett. Caden Raymer, your pitcher for the Pigot Mohawks. Bases loaded full of Bobcats. Ball's a little outside. That'll bring up 3-1. Nowhere to put them here. Nowhere to put them. How you got a hitter's count. Ducks on the pond. Boy, if you're Jackson Jett, this is a good time to unload on one right here. Does Raymer take a little off to get it over the plate? We shall see. One down here in the bottom of the second. Low pitch, and that's going to be ball four, and that'll be an RBI run. Walked in, if you will. 7 nothing Bobcats now. Good eye there by Mr. Jackson Jett. And coming up to bat now, as soon as he turns around, I'll be able to see his number, number 12. There we go. Eli Wright. So Eli Wright's coming up to bat. He's going to talk to uh, Coach George as we get a new pitcher for the Mohawks. So 13 goes out and 12 comes in. So with Alan Rab John and Heather Seagraves are watching, I'm looking for number 12 if y'all can help me out. That is our new pitcher. believe we started with Lane Murray and then we had Caden Raymer and now we've got number 12 here for the Mohawks sorry going through some different stuff here making sure I'm not missing any comments we got two different Facebook pages that we're always live on and a YouTube channel. It takes a second to go through some of that, so just making sure. Alan Ramjohn says, thanks, Andy. Broadcast is great. Kyle has the field looking good. Man, thank you, Alan. That's uh, extremely nice. Oh, that was on YouTube. So Alan's went from YouTube to Facebook. He's, he's doing everything he can to help us out. <laughs> so Alan and Heather get the MVP of the uh, uh, of the um, they get the MVP of the uh, Pigot fans tonight. So Alan says, closer view, please. Well, Alan, this is all, I don't have anybody running a camera today. I wish I did. The best I have is this is an unmanned camera at first. Um, this is a camera from behind, and then this right here, is, it's all I've got. And I've, it's a wide view from a GoPro, and I can't change it once it's already set. I'd have to unhook everything and then rechange it, so it's kind of a headache. But um, it's the best I can do. matter of fact, I just lost that camera, so I'm about to, I'm about to bring it back. So you're not going to be able to see this hit right here. Um, which is definitely a base hit, and I apologize, but you're not going to be able to see anything, actually. Uh, I just lost that. Two runners are going to score. A third one's coming around third. They hold there. The runner goes from first to second, and that's a going to be a, almost, a, almost a basis clearing double, but you still got one on there. And we'll add the other run for the Bobcats. Got one on there at third, and, of course, one on second. I'm going to try to get this camera back for us if I can. I'm struggling to get it turned on, guys. Y'all bear with me here. Sorry, guys. Let's see if we can get this thing back up here for you. There we go. We got that one back. There we go. Okay. So your runner will take first there. And again, the bases will be loaded for the Bobcats. Uh, nine nothing is your score. One out. That was ball number one, and that was to number seven, and that is Rex Shirt. Pitchers Briar Johnson, thank you, buddy, coming through for us again. It's Alan Rabjohn, pitch out of the zone for a ball. Again, we had a couple of the cameras that would have done probably a little bit better justice um, earlier on. 
but trying to get a few of these cameras out of here so in case it starts running quick I ain't got a I'm a one man show today so Pat Merle says watching from home go Bobcats go Lane hey Lane has done good today uh, Pat just tuning in with us there Allen says that view works okay well good good that ball was chopped fair right in front of the pitcher he's going to throw it to first and they're going to say not in time Great hit that's going to drive in a run. And, of course, you can only have five runs per inning, it looks like. So we'll put up an out there and then a top of the next inning graphic. And that will bring us up to the top of the third. Um, the line score probably won't be accurate, but let's just go ahead and pull it up just so you can have it. Um, yeah, see, that's not accurate. It, it erased some of my stuff from earlier. But either way, you get the point. We're going to the top of the third, and it is 10 uh, it's nothing right now in, uh, in favor of the Bobcats. Okay. Mary Rat's on with us. Uh, Brittany Ward's also on with us. Uh, Judy Miller, Roger Hovis. Guys, again, 630 coming up close. That's when they said uh, earlier that the uh, weather would be here. So everybody just kind of be aware of where you're at and where it's at. Um, yes, Brittany Ward, if you're listening, the second game is a junior high game. We've got it sitting on our screen there. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's the tagline on the top part. I know the bottom part kind of scrolls. It changes comments. I don't know if y'all can see it. Like right now it says like and follow us on Facebook. Um, but the top one stays there. So it is a junior high game. Um, so, yeah. So you're good, Brittany. Brittany's one of our staffers. She's just trying to make sure she does some stuff right with the different stuff we do with posting of, of stuff. So we appreciate her. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can take down before this rain starts hitting. Really much I can really do. I guess I could take this. All right, guys, I'm going to go off the headset for just a second. I'm going to go take something down real quick. Okay, all right, I am back. Put some, put some more stuff up there, and I'm going to check our YouTube comments while I'm at it as we get ready for this first at bat of the top of the third. We got a new pitcher for Corning. That is going to be Eli Wright for the Bobcats. The first pitch from Eli is in for a ball. And let me change the pitch count for Corning if I can find it. So it'll be his first pitch, it'll be his second pitch. That was also a ball. Change that, so ball two. That should give him two pitches. It should give us a 2-0 count. We should be fine there. Okay, we're back at it now. Pitch down in there for a strike. Beautiful pitch there from Eli Wright. Good job, young man. Next one swung through. Good cut by Raymer. But gets it by him, does Eli Wright. That was a good, healthy cut. And we've got birds going crazy uh, here in Corning, Arkansas. <laughs> no, you can't see them right there. That's going to be a, a ball. It's going to make it a full count. I don't know if you can see them from that screen. It's kind of a wider view. They're definitely making a racket. I think they know what's coming, too. Full count. Here comes the payoff pitch from Eli Wright. High and outside for ball four. Raymer will take first base. You'll see him coming into your screen there. Leadoff runner is on here in the top of the third inning for the Mohawks. And up to bat now, I think, is Briar Johnson, I believe. Because I believe he was pitching. He was number 12, so I'm pretty sure that's right. First pitch to Johnson's high for a ball. And all of a sudden the wind just 
just died. It just it went out. It went away. I think it's the first time all day we hadn't had at least some sort of wind. Kind of an eerie feel. Swung through from Johnson. Good healthy cut there. Nice hack at it, but it's like an old TLC song. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Don't go chasing high fastballs. That's what our coach used to say. Just that gets past the catcher. That'll advance Raymer, I do believe, to second. He slides anyways just for the fun of it. I like it. <laughs> and that'll put a 3-1 count here on Briar Johnson. And Mohawks. Hey, they got a runner in second now. They're going to say ball four. Runner will advance to first. And now the Mohawks have their first two runners on of this third inning. And that will bring up number five, who I don't have yet, as Emma Langley tunes in with us. So there's Lynn Veneta and Mary Wright. Low pitch for a ball from Eli Wright. Corning has plated five the first two innings. I think that's the, the amount that they give you. In the, I think you're capped at five. Good strike there from Eli. Five is Lane Murray batting right now. Night train Lane. Let's see what Lane's got here. Low pitch by Eli. Good block back here by Small. You got Raymer at second. You got Johnson at first. And you got Murray at the plate for the Mohawks. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. Three one struggling to get the strikes here. John Bradshaw John Bradshaw watching from Reno on Kurt River. Nice looking good Bobcats. Be ready, uh, John. We got some got some weather coming as we got another walk. Bases are now loaded. You'll be able to see that from this view right here. Sorry, guys. My staff's giving me a hard time. Not sure what about. Swung through by number 14 for the Mohawks. Eli Wright. Good pitch right there, young man. Cole, uh, Cole Culver is your hitter right now for the Mohawks. Number 15. I just threw my pin for some reason. I don't know what that was all about. Two strikes here on Culver. High pitch. He went after it. Struck him out. Good job there by Eli. Cole. Culver. Got a lefty up now for Piggott. I didn't catch his number coming across there. He swung at that first. Number seven. I don't have seven. Don't have a seven. Burke Swan, I do now by gollies. Alan or Abjohn is like a just a uh, dictionary for me right now. Thank goodness. One zero count, good, healthy hack there from Swan. See the first baseman in a little bit there for the Bobcats. Ashley Banks tuned in with us. Hard hit foul. That's going to go out of play. No, it just hit the fence. Actually, it's going to stay in the field of play, but it is going to be a strike. One-two count here on Burke. Burke at bat, right on the mump. Here comes the pitch. Struck him out. Great job by Eli right there. And that was actually the third out. We had not uh, hit that on our screen there, so I apologize about that. Actually, they're going to say it's only the second out. Okay, then I was right. That makes me feel a little bit better. I 
only had two outs. We shall see. I'm pretty sure it's two outs. Okay, yeah, that's right. For once in my life, I was right. This was pretty good. Not going to lie to you. <laughs> Eli, the first pitcher. Again, bases are still loaded full of Mohawks. That's number two, and I know who that is. That's Peyton Winscott. Winscott's got an opportunity here with some ducks on the pond for the Mohawks. Lights are on here at Bobcat Field. Low pitch. Good job by Small. He lost it. Can't find it. It's right there. It just kind of died. He hit a divot in the dirt and just laid down. Infield playing a little bit normal depth. I'd say the shortstop's a little bit back. First baseman up a little bit. High and inside on that pitch. And all of a sudden it's 3-0 with nowhere to go. Nowhere to put them here. As Eli Wright's going to try to pitch out of this jam. Birds are chirping. Fans are talking. Beautiful day. Pickoff attempt at first. A little late. Eli, 3-0 pitch. It's high, and that's going to be an RBI for Piggott. A run walked in, and Piggott is now on the board. Good eyes there by Winscott. And now coming up for the Mohawks is, I believe, Chase Sanders, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm right with that. Yes. That is Chase Sanders. And Chase chased that first pitch low. Good, healthy swing, though. Eli coming back there. Hey, just walked a guy. It's easy to get down. He got his head up and threw a strike. Comes back just a little bit low. Bobcat Field here in Corning, Arkansas. Andy Earls with you. Your lone ranger today. Nice pitch on the outside part of the plate from Eli Wright. Got Colt Muddy and my IT guy from afar. But it is you and I. Bases full of Mohawks. Down to their last strike in this inning, though. Can they get some more runs across that plate? We shall see. Sanders at the plate. Eyes the ball high and outside. Don't mind that pitch there from Eli. Deuces wild for Piggott. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Eli. Wind up. He fires right down the middle for strike three. Love the call there from the umpire, too. <laughs> That'll take us to the bottom of the third. I won't give you a line score because it doesn't it, – it's, it's catching some of the stuff from the first game when I do this, so it's not accurate if I, if I show you that, so I'm not going to do that. But either way, it is 10-1. to 1. You do see the score there. And even the Piggott uh, pitch count is wrong. For some reason, it just won't. It keeps uh, – so this is the same scoreboard I used for the senior high game, and every time I go to the next inning, it picks up whatever the pitch count would have been for the senior high team during that inning. And I don't know how to adjust that now, so I'm just going to stay with it. But either way, we've got a 10-1 to 1 ball game as we go into the bottom of the third. And while we've got an opportunity, we want to give some love to our sponsors real quick, so let's do that right now. Big thanks to all 63 of our sponsors. That's a record for us. I think our very first year, five years ago, I think we had 30, eh, 34, 35, and we were super impressed with that. I mean, really, we were super, super impressed with that. Um, and, man, to, to see where we've come from there, to see where you guys have taken us from there has really been phenomenal. We just want to say thank you guys. Um, Alan Rabjohn says umpire's name is Michael Tompkins. He does a good job. You know, he has done a good job. He really has. Um, him and the other umpires. Well, there's another one. Um, oh, I heard his name earlier, uh, Alan, but I cannot remember it. Um, but, no, he's done a great job, too. They both have. Um, you know, and, and 
and in Michael Tompkins defense this guy is like really animated very vocal uh, fun to be around uh, has done a phenomenal job doing a good job buddy doing a good job um, so um, and it's fun when they engage with us too you know at the end of the day we sometimes forget these guys are human beings too you know and uh, and they're out here they, they don't do it for the pay don't don't kid yourself guys they don't get paid enough <laughs> They don't do it for the pay. They don't do it for the money, I promise you. They do it for the love of the game or, uh, you know, love the kids, you know, uh, you know, to pave that way. To, for other umpires, um, they're doing it for all the right reasons is the whole point of that, and and so we appreciate them. Uh, but, yeah, he's been fun to watch. He really has. And there's a throw down from the catcher, Lane Murray. And now we've got our first batter of this bottom of the third inning as the Mr. Tompkins is going to clean that plate off for him. Michael Daddy Jr. is tuned in with us. We appreciate you, Michael, for tuning in. And now that I have these rosters, if I'm ever here again with a junior high here and we do a game, I will make sure to get their graphic on the screen. Um we have that capability of doing that graphics. Uh, only when we use this graphics system, though, and that's usually just when I'm here. But um, I believe that's Bentley Ermitt who took that first pitch for a ball. And am I, am I seeing that right? We got a new pitcher, don't we? We do have a new pitcher. That's Carson. Is it Callis or Collis? Or no, that's number six. That's number six. That's not number four. That's number six. So let's see if we've got any messages yet. Jacob Haywood, how about that? <laughs> I tell you what, ask and you shall receive with these picket fans. You guys are rocking and rolling, especially you, Alan uh, Red John. So Haywood on the mound. He's got a 3-0 count. He does walk the first one. That was Armert. And Armert looks like he's got some wheels on him, so I would, if I'm uh, Haywood and company here, I'm definitely watching out. I believe it was Murray, Lane Murray, who was catching. Oh, he said Jackson, not Jacob. Is that right, Alan Jackson Haywood? I'll just I'll call him Haywood just to be safe, but I'll change that just in case. Jackson Haywood. Okay, okay, very good. Jackson Haywood on the mound. Appreciate that. I like the Jackson with an X. That's kind of cool. You see the lead over there by Ermert. And now you see Jackson pitching to the lane. Lane Lucas, there goes the runner. And he's going to be in safe. First pitch is in for a ball to Lane Lucas. We'll advance that runner graphic to second on our screen. There we go. Charles Jones tuning in with us. We appreciate you tuning in with us tonight. I can't really talk tonight. I went to the dentist today. Um, it was just, I mean, it wasn't nothing like crazy. It was just some, I had some feelings that needed done on the back end of my a couple of teeth I had. And uh, they numb me up and everything. Man, I have not been able to hardly talk at all today worth a hoot. And here I am having to <laughs> commentate these games today. Go figure. Good Lord has a sense of humor, I guess, sometimes. Originally, wasn't scheduled to do these games, but uh, that's okay. I'm happy to be here and happy to be in God's country here for some rivalry baseball. Nice pitch there from Haywood. That was beautiful. Lane Lucas let that one go. It was a 3-0 count, but still, beautiful pitch. As Shelly Latrell tunes in with us as well. Outside for ball four. Good eyes there from Lucas. Lucas will take first base. You see him hopping over there right now. And we'll see who that will bring up for the Bobcats. Try to get a number as he crosses. No, he ain't going to cross. He's a lefty. That is number six. That's Caleb Corrello. All right, well, runners on first and second now for the Bobcats, and Caleb to bat gets past the catcher. Both runners will advance to second and third as Corrala will have a 1-0 count on him now. Again, weather uh, eventually going to get here. We were told 6.30. It's 6.42 now. No weather yet, thank goodness. I've still got a lot of equipment out here, so that's why I'm saying thank goodness, but comes a 1-0 pitch down low and outside for ball two. As Caratlo patiently waits at the plate. 
Six versus six here. Haywood sets from the stretch. And he fires for a strike. Good job. Good pitch there from Haywood. Normally after the game, I would go straight to the uh, ad video. I don't know. I may just cut the stream so I can get this equipment inside this uh, press box behind me as quickly as possible. I don't know if y'all can see me there in the back left-hand corner behind the uh, – I don't know if you can see me there. I'm kind of waving. Wax on, wax off. There we go. Um, you see me. Uh, so I'm actually outside as it's low for a ball. It'll be 3-1 now is your count. Um so I'm actually outside, so I've got to get all this stuff inside pretty quick. So normally we'd go to a ad video, but we probably won't do that tonight. Probably just cut the stream as soon as this one's over. I don't know how many innings they, they planned on playing tonight for junior high. And I, this is my first time uh, doing the junior high this year, so I'm not sure what the game plan is there. But I'll stay with you as long as I possibly can. Ball four high and outside as we watch Corotlo trot to first. He gets a fist pump from... Coach Radcliffe and the Mohawks are possibly uh, doing some changing up here on the mound, or at least a talking on the mound. Coach comes to the mound, just gives a little pep talk. I, I don't mind that. I really like that, actually. Sometimes just a little word of encouragement, you know, just the simple stuff like, hey, let's just take a breath, take a deep breath, don't forget to breathe, and then, give, and then leave them with something positive. I like that. Bases loaded full of Bobcats for Dawson Leach, I do believe, the lefty. Comes the first pitch to Leach right down Main Street. And obviously, the, the little pep talk from Coach worked. Comes right back with a good pitch. Swing and a miss, and all of a sudden, two strikes now. And Dawson's in the ho-o, too. How about Jackson battling back here? Both dugouts very active and vocal right now, too. Love to see that, especially this age. Swung through it. Great pitch by Haywood for out number one. That's a big pitch right there. Good job, young man. I believe this is – that's going to get past the catcher. Here comes a runner from third. Going to score standing up, and all the runners will advance. And it'll be 11-1 to 1 now in favor of the Bobcats. And I believe, again, this is number 17, but I don't have a 17 uh, on the roster for Corning. I apologize uh, about that. I should say 1-0 count. I'll fix that. High pitch again. Great job of the catcher this time. I still think it's Murray back there behind the plate. He did a good job right there. Caden Denton. There we go. Thank you, Miss Morrow. Caden Denton. How about Caden? He's done a good job today. That one swung through. Good healthy cut there from Denton. You guys always looking out for me when I need it. I appreciate that. You see the bases are loaded there. Full of bot, or I'm sorry, runners in scoring position. Two out of three there on second and third for the Bobcats. Pitch a little bit low and outside. Three or one's your count. Right down Main Street from Haywood. And that's going to make it full. 3-2. One down here. Two runners on for the Bobcats in scoring position. The payoff pitch to Caden Denton from Haywood is high and inside. That'll be ball four. That'll load them back up for the Bobcats. Umpire was trying to get the um, on-deck hitter to run around. He does. Yeah. 
High pitch up and in to Stadler for a ball. Haywood, the righty. Good inside pitch right there, fouled off by Stadler. That went behind the concession stand. There's no telling how many balls have actually been hit out to that ditch behind us. It runs almost parallel to the third base and left field foul line. And there has been a ton of balls hit out that way. The pitch was pretty close, but a little bit too far on the inside there. Two ones your count. From Haywood to Stadler. Bases juiced. Ducks on the pond, if you will. Pitch low and in the dirt. 3-1. Nowhere to put them here for Haywood. See if he takes some off this pitch. Just try to get it over the plate. Swung through from Stadler. Good pitch there. A little bit ahead of it, it looked like. Was Breyer. And now a full count. 3 two is your count. We're from one down here in the bottom half of the third inning. This is the junior high game. Here comes the payoff pitch. It's outside for ball four. And that'll bring in a run as well. Good job by Stadler there. It's easy to get a little too excited in anticipation of a 3-2 count on that pitch, and sometimes you just go up there just swinging away. <laughs> Did a great job. Now Haywood's got to deal with them loaded yet again. That's Bryce Cox up there. First pitch looks good, though, from Haywood. Gets him swinging through it. A little high there, went chasing it. Still a good crowd here from both sides. Love to see that. Little low. Little low on outside. Twelve to one is the score I have. High and inside. Pyre does a good job cleaning the plate there. Infield, playing a little bit deep. Outfield, normal depth. Goes low. He hits it to the third baseman. Third baseman coming home. That's behind the catcher, behind the runner. Runner safe, and here comes another run for the Bobcats crossing. And that's going to be Cox at second base by the time all the dust is settled. And, of course, two more runs for the Bobcats. I've got it 14 to 1. I think the scoreboard's at 13 to 1. But either way, we'll, we'll figure it out together. It's going to bring up Bryson Murray. Although we've got a little bit of a mound visit here. And I think we've even got a pitching change is what it looks like. It's number nine now who's pitching. And if Alan, if you're listening, I do not have a number nine for Pickett. Any help there would be greatly appreciated. And I'm sure you'll come through as you always do. All right, guys, we appreciate y'all tuning in with us today. And there he is, Keaton Wicker. Doesn't take him long, does it? He is on it. Keaton Wicker is our pitcher. So while Wicker sits there and gets some warm-ups in, I want to mention that uh, our next stream is going to be a little bit. Uh, well, I say that. Our next stream with uh, our company will be Saturday, Arkansas State Red Wolves Rugby, number three team in the nation right now. And uh, they play, I think they were number 10, Davenport. Uh, big, big home game. But after that, as far as Corning Bobcats streams go, we essentially get a week off. It's spring break, and uh, coach didn't have any games scheduled. I don't think uh, I don't think I think Pickett's getting the week off too for their senior high team. Uh, no games scheduled that I'm aware of. 
for them either. I was talking to Billy Joe Seal earlier and uh, Coach uh, Dodd as well. And so we'll have a week off. It'll be kind of odd uh, not bringing you guys some uh, some round ball on the diamond, whether it be softball or baseball. But we will have rugby this Saturday. Really big game in, in Jonesboro for ASU. I believe this is the final regular season game of the year. And remember, in rugby, college rugby, your top 16 go to the playoffs. And your top eight seeds host the first round. And ASU right now is the number three team in the country. So they beat number 10. You would assume that they would be hosting unless something really crazy happens behind them, which I, I just don't see that many teams could jump them. I don't know how they could. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If they win, then they would be hosting a playoff game. Again, only 16 teams. Good hit there by Murray. Goes to the second baseman, and it's out. Great job by the Piggott second baseman. That did plate. A Bobcat runner and advance the runner, I think, Cox from second to third. But it is out number two as well. 4-3 on your put out. So Wicker comes up and gets a quick out. Again, a run did come across. I've got 15 to 1. They got 14 to 1. I'm just going to trust them. Wicker, high pitch. That'll be a... Ball one on Jackson Jet. Perfect temperature today for some baseball. Outside, good job by the catcher there, and that's a new catcher. That's Winscott. Heck of a job by Winscott. Reaching out to get that thing. That was impressive. Wanda Roark's watching with us. Thank you, Wanda, for tuning in. 2-0 count here from Wicker to Jet. So a runner on third here with two outs. Ooh, dangerous. Inside, high and tight, little chin music, if you will. 3-0 count. Do you, do you give him a green light here? Hey. <laughs> Coach George just said, yeah. So either he asked him, should I take, or he asked him, is it okay if I swing? And Coach said, yeah. I don't know which it was, but we're going to find out right now. Because <laughs> here comes the pitch from Wicker, and he takes it. And that's going to be a strike. <laughs> I love that. Coach said, yeah. So whatever it was, it was an obvious, well, duh. Don't know which it was, but I assume it was the take. 3-1 count now with two outs. We'll see if Jackson can grip it and rip it here. Hitters count for sure. Wicker's done a good job since he's came in, though. Down low in the dirt, and just as soon as I say that, I jinx the pitcher. And Jackson's going to take first. And we'll have runners at the corners. We'll see if uh, Jet turns on the Jets here to try to take second base after this first pitch. Two, number 12, Eli Wright. We'll see the lead he gets over here. Of course, his run... Wouldn't really matter, I don't guess, if it's only five. He's gone. He's definitely taking it. It's going to be an indifference there. They won't even throw. One owes your count to Eli Wright. Eli has a chance to plate that fifth run that would match their first two innings. Five runs in the first, five in the second. Here in the third with four. And got a runner at third base, eagerly trying to get to home. Winscott's not allowing. I tell you, what, there's been a lot of pitches that have been kind of borderline. You're thinking, ooh, that may get past him, but it doesn't. I kind of like this combination here of Wicker and Winscott pitching and catching. Eli, good eye there. Very patient at the plate right now. Three-zero count here. Outside for ball four, and the bases are loaded. And that'll bring up your catcher, T.J. Small. He had to ditch his shin guards there. T.J. with a chance to get that fifth run in. 
Again, that 104 pitches is not this pitcher. It's all of the picket pitchers combined. It would not let me uh, edit that for some reason. First pitch for a strike. How about this from Wicker? Here we go. Struggling to find the plate. He came out doing well, then kind of struggled to find the plate, and then bam, bounces back, throws a strike. Down low, bounce, good job there by the catcher. Took a weird hop, had some spin on it. Shot straight down, thankfully, for, for the Mohawks. I want to say thanks to all the, the, you know, we always talk about our people at Corning that always tune in with us, but also the people at Pigot. I mean, you know, we've always been big rivals, but you guys have always uh, tuned in with us and helped share the feed and always been good to us. So we want to say thank you. Good job by Wynn Scott there. I want to say thank you to you guys as well. We do appreciate it. Good eye by TJ Small. We've always had a good, uh, a good, good viewing base from Clay County, from all the towns. We really appreciate that. And if we had the manpower and time, I promise you, we'd, we'd stream for all, all three of them here in Clay County. We just, just don't quite have the manpower. Small rips it over to third base. Back in and out goes under the glove, and that'll be the fifth run. Good hit there by Small. And that'll be five. That should take us to the top of the next inning, which would be the top of the fourth. I'll go ahead and hit that as it changes there. And guys, I may cut another camera. I may. Game's over. They're saying the weather's coming. It's getting close, and I can actually see it behind us. He's right. All right, guys, so that'll be the final here, 15-1 to 1 in favor of Piggott. We want to thank everybody for tuning in with us. Um, I will try to send it to my ad video, but uh, I don't know how much of that will actually get in. Uh, I'm going to run out there and get the center field camera first, and then we'll start putting everything up. Please be safe, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. Big win by the Corning Bobcat Senior High Team tonight. Big win by the Corning Bobcat Junior High Team tonight. Big thanks to the umpires. They did a great job. Big thanks to all the folks here that kept scoreboard, Shelly Smith and everybody else as well. Um, thank you guys for tuning in, all you guys that helped us out. Thank you all so, so much. We appreciate it. Sorry I'm having to dart off here real quick. Um, our next stream will be Saturday, College Rugby, number three team of the nation versus number ten team of the nation at ASU. And then we get a week off from high school sports, and we'll come back after spring break. Guys, we appreciate it. I'm sent to add video. Then... Welcome to any time and talk to people from our area. For more information, give us a call at 870-202-1990. Here's a familiar face with us here at CSR. How about Jason Horner and Big Iron Auctions? Jason's been with us since the very, very beginning. I want to say thank you, Jason, for all your support here at CSR. He's your independent sales representative. You can get a hold of him at 870-598-4310. Listing equipment in Clay, Greene County in Arkansas, and Butler and Ripley County in Missouri. Again, that's Jason Horner with Big Iron Auctions, 870-598-4310. Jason wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Let's give it up to the Solaces, our friends Jerry, Rhonda, and Michael with Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation right there in Corning, Arkansas. Been in business 40 plus years. Grain bins and related accessories, sales and service, complete irrigation installation. And in 2019, Michael became the third generation to continue to provide these services to their customers. Get a hold of them at 870-857-3086. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. That's Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation. All of us at Corning Sports Report want to say thank you to Cindy and Matt Woolard and Woolard Flying Service out of Corning, Arkansas. You can get a hold of Woolard Flying Service at 870-857-3839. Of course, they're there at the airport, 108 Airport, Highway 980 in Corning. And Matt and Cindy, huge hog fans, which we always love, but even bigger Corning Bobcat fans. We appreciate their support here at CSR, and we appreciate all they do for the city of Corning. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck. Next up on the CSR sponsor video slideshow, Red Taylor Ford out of Corning, Arkansas. Hey, they've been family owned and operated since 1977. How about that? Right there off of 2nd Street 
Uh, right off the main drag there in Corning, Arkansas. Get a hold of them, 870-857-3516. Red Taylor Ford in Corning, Arkansas, offering new Ford cars, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers. Visit them online at www.redtaylorford.com. They want to watch the Bobcast. The best of luck. I want to give a big thank you to Mr. Kirk Scoby and Shelter Insurance out of Corning, Arkansas. Hey, yes, your agent. He can help you make sure you get the right coverage at the right price while providing the quality service you expect. Feel free to give him a call to discuss your insurance options today. That's Kirk Scobie at 870-857-3211. It's auto, it's home, it's life, but it's much more than that. Kirk wants to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Let's give a shout out to our new sponsor, NEA Veterinary Clinic. Out of Corning, Arkansas. Hey, NEA Vet Clinic is a full-service animal hospital that welcomes patients for routine medical, surgical, and dental care as well as emergency treatments. Dr. Ginger Seagraves has over 20 years of veterinary experience, including regular pet wellness, diagnosing, and treating severe conditions beyond first-rate pet care. They make their clinic comfortable, kid-friendly, and calm so your pet can relax in the waiting room and look forward to meeting our veterinarians. Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Reach them at 870-857-5050. They want to watch the Bobcats. The best of luck on the season. You'd be hard-pressed to find bigger Bobcat fans than these two right here. Jim and Sandy Davis of JSD Cattle Ranch. I want to thank JSD Cattle Ranch for jumping on board with us again. Multiple years of support. Uh, we really, really appreciate them. and uh, They love us here at CSR, and we love them, too. Uh, Jim Davis, uh, we appreciate you, buddy, for helping out with this uh, for the third, actually probably fourth year in a row. So thank you so much. JSD Cattle Ranch, go Bobcats. Let's give a shout out to Harold Implement Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Harold Implement is a proud supporter of the Corning Bobcats, family owned and operated in Corning since 1946. We are your one-stop shop for all things Polaris. Bad Boy, Ace Hardware, Yamaha Off-Road, and Hunting Supplies. Again, give them a call, 870-857-3931. They want to watch the Bobcast. The best of luck on the season, Harold Implement Company. Let's give it up for our new sponsor this year, Southern Breeze Heating and Cooling, LLC. You see Mr. Wes Dollar and Danny Reed there on your screen. We appreciate those two guys, the owners there. Commercial, residential, whatever it may be, these are your guys. No matter how hot it gets, how cold it gets, you've got an option here. Call Wes at 870-450-3900 or Danny, 870-323-2057. They want to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Midwest Auto Parts has been a family-owned business in the heart of Corning since 1946, when it was established 